Hey, uh. Um. Sorry, I've been muted. <laughs> Hello. Ah, uh, that makes sense. I do the same. Yeah, I've um, got like multiple mutes, and I just get confused because my uh, brain's mute, 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 mute. Um, let's see. So oh, I yeah. sent you a file that has uh like some updated code to. I'm returning to the shell program you helped me with before. Cool. And I could never get the piping to work, and I've been trying to troubleshoot it. Um. And I went through the past tutoring recording that I had. Okay. And I still wasn't able to get it working. Um, cool. So that's kind of like what I'm currently stuck on. Okay. And then we'll see how that so goes. The, <laughs> um, so the... Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Let me do that. Uh... Okay, so you said uh, tried to get it doing piping. Yeah, because we had written a we okay. had written functions to handle piping, Did and right now work. Yeah, so. and it's possible that your version was working, but I never got mine personally to work. I so. see. Okay, let me let me look into that. Um, Uh, I I just sent you this one in the um. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I have in here. I have this, but I was thinking yeah. like maybe I could go look at the old version that I have. Um. Yeah, you might you might want to do that. This is largely the same. The only big changes I made was um I like parsed out the header file and then I got rid of the CS. What was it like um I think it was csapp.c it was also referencing cuz you didn't really use any of it in that assignment I don't know why they had to start with those but they did I see um uh it might be uh there's a book that that goes by that name and it might oh. be that they just have that by default and not all of the assignments actually use all the things from there Oh, that um, makes sense. Okay. Uh, like I think I remember a, a fork with a capital F and a couple other yes. things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and when I like dug into those, uh, like I took a look at the functions just to make sure that like when I was running it with my parse down version, there, like I couldn't see anything that it was doing that was special to, like why the f why piping would break, but maybe I'm overlooking something. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so... Uh, okay, so let's see what state it is currently in. Do I not have a shell for this? I guess not. Okay. Make... Okay, so it does that. Uh, yep. So if we do ls and pipe that into... No, cat, all of no. mine have to start with the bin. Uh... And I don't know, I don't know and how to change LS. that. The yeah, yeah. Uh, like that I don't know should if work. That's the full path to my ls, but okay, yeah, it might be. And then we can pipe that into bin cat, maybe. I don't think that I I believe as this work is, it won't work. Uh, because the pipes, I don't know why pipes aren't working. <laughs> uh wait what did that even do so uh oh how do you exit quit control d i see uh, yeah it, it accepts quit control d is end of file so it looks like that also is handled. that works too yeah cool um so then um uh, what happens if I do oh! LS and pipe that into cat? Oh! Okay. Wait a minute. What's Wait up? a minute. So for you, when you did... Hold on. Um, when you did bin slash ls, and then you piped, you repeated the bin. Oh! 
Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> so that's why mine's not oh and but I don't think I have mine set up where um oh. <laughs> Yeah, then this happens. So this is the error I was having before. Uh so this is LS telling me like cat. Yeah. So it doesn't know what LS is. Or maybe it doesn't it doesn't recognize them as built in commands. Um and I don't know if it's because okay. of how we're reading in the first um so we get a command line and then uh if standard in is end of file then we exit. Otherwise we evaluate the command line. What does eval do? Uh, eval does a lot of stuff. BG equals parse line. Uh, let's see. Is the are the built-in commands like right in here? Built-in command. So there's even a function with that name. Uh, quit and ampersand. So yeah, if this is the if this is what it sounds like it is from the name, then I would expect to see ls in here somewhere. So, so if I want, okay, so if I want it to work where I don't have to use the, like, bin path, I would add them to the built-in command function. Uh, that's one way to do it and then there's also checking the environment variable that was my other question like yeah yeah i had read about the environment variable Path. and how how a little bit but i i don't know how to use it to make it so you don't need that um path yeah um well uh i guess i haven't actually written c code to do this but i know so if you do echo dollar mm -hmm. sign path, you'll get uh, this, something like this. And this mm -hmm. is a bunch of paths. Um, so right now, I guess I have Conda installed. And Conda is messing mm -hmm. with my path. Got it. Um, but uh, it's a bunch of paths that are colon separated. So if we take this whole thing and we uh, split on the colon. Colon, okay. Then we'll get a bunch of paths. And uh, we try them in order. So if I type ls and then I hit enter, um, if it wasn't a... Well, first it checks the built-ins. And then if it wasn't a built-in, it will try uh, opt conda conda bin ls and see if that's a file and the reason it tries oh, that oh. is because that's here it's the and first then, one in that path okay yeah, that's why the order of this path matters it'll try that then it'll try this one then it'll try this one which uh in that, is doable in, in, but it sounds really tedious <laughs> um to yeah, write the code right. for that but is that so? What is doing that? Is the environment variable? The so the environment variable is where this comes from. Is where that comes from. Okay. This data you can there's a get env, uh, yeah. thing, and so the mm -hmm. you can send in to env the string path. Okay. Uh, and then it will give you back this information. Um, exactly how it does that, I don't remember, but this information is then accessible somehow. And then you can use stirtoke, I guess, uh, stirtoke underscore r, because it's 2020 something. Um, <laughs> and uh, we want to write safe code that can be multi-threaded, future-proof. Um, anyway, so yeah. uh, stirtoke underscore r, the, that'll allow you to grab um, each colon separated thing at a time and then try appending whatever the user typed to 
whatever the path here is and then see if that's a file that's executable um, or actually I, I don't know that it tries to see if it's executable uh, I think it does not so let me try uh, what's a something that I can try out um, oh my bin directory is exists so I'm gonna try which FDSA okay so I don't have something called FDSA so I'm going to make there be something called FDSA in my bin directory and now if I type FDSA it says oh look at that yeah so it doesn't try to check whether it is executable it just checks the existence of a file at some location mm -hmm. and then as soon as it fi finds any file, it then tries to execute that file. Um, and uh, that'll either work or it won't. And then it goes back to the shell prompt. So, uh, so yeah. So, um, append this to every single path. I wonder, what happens if I type bin FDSA? Bin FDSA, okay. So it actually uh, inspects this, and if it looks like a relative path, then it doesn't try to use this. Mm -hmm. um, because if it did, then it, it should have printed out this again. Uh, or wait. Oh, uh, maybe. Let me try... Okay, yeah. So, um, so it didn't append this to, mm -hmm. uh, this path and then find a file there. There okay. is a file there. Um, home, me, bin, <laughs> bin has the file FDSA. Um, oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, it didn't append this to the path home o z z l o y bin, um, even though this is in my path. So it must be that it is inspecting this and checking does it look like a relative path, which is maybe just checking does it have a slash in it. Okay. Um. So anyway. Uh, the simple version is just take whatever the person typed and right. append it to each one of the things in this path. And then once, yeah, that's, that's where I would start, uh, if you wanted to be able to handle that. But that's if, that's if you want to handle, like, um. Executables that are not built in and they are in the path somewhere. Are in the path. Okay. Okay. Um, and I don't even know when I use... Uh, I'm probably using... Oh, this says... This says that it's... Whoops. Uh, type ls. Alias to that. But then, what about this ls? Yeah, I'm not sure how to check whether it's a built-in. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, or like we, the, uh, so then, so that's one way. And then the other way, and, it, and I don't, I assume this is maybe the way that a lot of these like shell assignments do it, is you then write your own built-ins based on real built-ins or no? Am I... Oh, um, so the, this is, so like bash has something like this somewhere. It, it also right. has a list, uh, that it checks. Is it one of the built-ins? It probably doesn't look like this actually, because I think the, I think it's more dynamic. Um, right. but it has this idea of like, 
I'll check through all of the known built-ins, um, this thing that somebody just entered, and then based on that, I will do something. Like, if it's a built-in, I'll do the built-in thing. Right. Um. Oh, it looks like this is... So this is returning whether it was a built-in command. Or it was not. And uh, it doesn't seem like it's doing anything else. This anything is just saying else. whether it was a built-in command. And maybe that's all it needs to do for the built-in commands that you have. So right. the built-in quit just exits. doesn't need to do anything else. And then, um, like... Ideally, instead of exiting immediately, you would yeah. clean up all the system resources, like free anything that was outstanding, oh. and that kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, for an initial homework assignment, that is fine. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, so the the way the actual shell works, it will check if what you typed is one of the built-in things um, and if it is then it'll do whatever's whatever is associated with the built-in thing and then if it's not one of the built-in things then it'll go look at the path um, there might be some other thing that I'm not considering but um, yeah no I'm I'm just so so I was going I was just thinking about like um, how this is it really it's like is is it a built-in command? Like yes or no? Yeah, and this, so right above this it is, seems is to where... just be saying, "Is it a built-in command? Yes or no?" Right. Um, and then yeah. above it is where, like, if it's not a built-in command, then it will. Check, it does yeah. it have a pipe? And if it has a pipe, you handle it. Otherwise, we handle the command. Yeah. Um, that appears to be correct. So, so if I wanted to do, uh, if I want to change it and like improve my shell, right? Yeah. How, like, what is the best way for me to go about doing that? I guess. Um, so, uh, if I want to improve my shell. I guess, shell. I guess I, I want to. I want to improve it by not having to do the the bin path and to have it recognize those built-in commands, like oh, uh, for like ls so and cat. Yeah. Want to type ls instead of bin. Uh, yeah, bin I think it has this. Yeah. Um. Okay. So for that, uh, that would be um. Check the path. Okay. For the command, if it's not a built in, um, so if the so the whatever the check the path for the command, um, where mm -hmm. the this command is the the first word on the command line that was entered right um so the the first word in the user input um and so so yeah so check the path for the command if it's not a built-in so we so there's already code for that in here so here uh by the time we get into this inside of this if we know that it's not a built-in Mm -hmm. um, and then this has pipe uh, probably just checks if there's a pipe character somewhere yeah uh, okay how is uh, or whoops I'm in the wrong I meant, uh, how is has pipe? So has pipe is called on argv. Argv is populated 
somehow. All right, so argv, I guess, is just uh, a it's a an array of strings, and then get yeah, index. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, then we, we we reset the index oh, wrote... at the pipe. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh yeah, so, so we reset the index at the various like for file redirects and for pipes. Um af after you after you find it. So you get that index and then you reset it so then the immediate um the next argument that comes after it is now your next, um, like, argv0. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Um, so then, uh, has pipe. So, um, really what should happen, mm -hmm. well, we can, we can just do... The way this works, it sounds like what it does is it just handles at most one pipe character. So you can like pipe and then mm -hmm. pipe again and then pipe again. You can pipe an arbitrary number of times. Right. Um, I, I don't know. I have not. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, let's not worry about that. Let's just handle ls. Uh, so that would be mm -hmm. here. Handle command. Uh, which, uh, immediately fork, handle the file descriptors, and then exec VE on argv0. So here, this mm -hmm. argv0, instead of just putting our argv0 here, you would need to do something like uh, check if argv0 exists, um, and, or rather, ensure argv0 exists, and you can, uh, like, what the details of ensuring that it exists are, would be, uh, you could put that like maybe in a separate function to look up. Uh, so it uh, a different function could do something like uh, if uh, argv zero, oops, argv zero is a path to a file then leave it alone and otherwise look it up in the environment path. Um, and I would do this, I would probably make this be like a separate function call Wait, wait, hold on. I just want to make sure uh, I'm in the right place. Um, line 200. 250-ish. I don't think I changed yeah. it that much. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, yeah, okay. You're saying first thing you want to ensure argv0 exists. Yeah, and then this is like a little bit of detail of what what that means. Okay. Um, so, uh, I might do something like, uh, uh, I don't know, ensure argv0, <laughs> uh, 
and then send in argv zeros address. Okay. Um, and then this would be a comment at the top of this function. Um, and the idea is once this returns, argv zero will have the right thing inside of it. Okay. Why? Well, because you've you've made we'll, sure we'll just, that it's not. Yeah. It's not a. Uh, it's not a path to a file. Uh. This this function will do whatever it needs to to make sure that argv zero. Is is what you want to then exec on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or it'll make a heroic effort. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. It'll do the best it can, because, like, it might be that you just type gibberish, in which case this can't find an answer to what you're looking for. Right. Um, so, so yeah, so ensure argv0, yeah. Um, and then, um, or maybe... Maybe you want to leave argv alone so that you can pass that in here as argv. Uh, but then here, you want to look up the actual function, the actual path. Because you know how when you run a function or a program, it knows in the first argv0, it knows that you ha you typed out like dot slash whatever. Right. Um, it knows that even if the way that it was actually run is by finding uh, the executable on the path somewhere and then modifying argv0 or the argument this first argument here oh and I got lost there <laughs> um so uh, if I create a Python uh, let me try doing that real quick Let's see if I can do uh, print args.py. Uh, Are you saying like when there's a period and then a forward slash, it knows to like search your directory, the current directory you're in? Uh, it's it's yeah, path? related to that. So if okay. I do right. arg equals... Um, so this is just going to print out, uh, whatever all the arguments are, it'll say arg equals whatever, arg equals whatever, arg equals whatever. Uh, so mm -hmm. let's go run it. Um, so if I go to my bin directory and then I, oh, I guess I need to do a little bit more. There and then shamad u plus x on uh what did I call it? Print args. Um shmod u plus x print args. Okay, so now if I do dot slash print args a b c oh, okay. it'll say dot slash print args a b c, but if I do print args, assuming there isn't something else on my path with that name. Uh, print args can, command not found. Oh, dot pi. Dot pi. Um, oh, it actually did update the whole path. Okay, so if we want to follow what bash does, we, re we would update the entire path. I was expecting this to not be there. I was expecting this. And just do do that. Okay. But uh but so it, it, it returned the, the entire thing. So So yeah, so it returned the entire path whereas and that and what you were expecting was it would just return after the slash. Yeah, just that one. Okay. 
So okay, so that that makes that uh, that thing that I was thinking is is not true. Um, so uh, I finally did the whole like I have so many students. Oh, uh, letters. I, yeah. <laughs> um. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Shell. Okay, so then going back into here. Oh no, that's not what I meant to do. Dot C. There we go. Okay. Uh. So yeah, we can we can just do this. Um. So do you want to like start doing that right now or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go for cool. it. All right. Yeah. So then. Uh. I guess we could do that right here. Void. Uh, for now, ensure argv0, which takes in a char star star uh, so argv is a char star star, so argv0 is a char star, and the address of that is, again, a char star star. So, char star <laughs> yeah. star argv0 um, so, did I, well, uh, check if argv0 is a complete path to a file that exists. Uh, if it is, leave it unmodified, unmodified unmodified and return otherwise um search and path for it okay so let's do this part how do we check whether a path exists whether this is a path to a file um, I, something with F stat, something, something, <laughs> I, I don't know off the top of my head. Do you? No. Okay. Uh, see, check if path is regular file. How do I tell if a given path is a directory or a file? Um, see, check if path exists uh, check if a file path exists in C with examples what ah okay wait that was Check if a directory exists. Check whether a file or directory exists or not. Code for Win. Hopefully this isn't specific to Windows. Using fopen, we have fopen returns file pointer on success, otherwise null. Uh, that feels a little bit clunky to like open the file just to see whether it exists i, I don't like that yeah. yeah um that seems janky yeah i agree check the accessibility it is more reliable way to check uh except to next is a mode so we it looks like we could do this to see if if executable is it, like if the path given is executable but it seems like it doesn't uh do that so if i do um asdf or no fdsa uh permission denied i guess it does print out something different so if it's not found then it says not found otherwise it says permission denied so we could do that um so here we could uh file that exists and is executable 
Um, and now I'm wondering what if there's if the file FDSA exists in two places and the mm -hmm. first one it's not executable and the one after that it is executable does it stop at the first one and say that file isn't executable or does it keep looking it probably just stops mm -hmm. at the very first one it finds right um Let's uh let's take the the happy path. <laughs> um, let's not <laughs> and worry assume, about that. Yeah. Let's do uh let's leave that as a to do. What should we do if the file exists multiple times on path and is executable? Uh, after the first one, which isn't executable. Um, so that is a to-do for later. Um, <laughs> so right now we're just checking if it's a file that exists and is executable. Um, so it accepts two parameters. Uh, pointer to a constant character pointing to a file path, which is, uh, and then a mode, which is a combination of those things. So I don't know what we need. Probably X okay. Probably don't need writable. Probably we need readable, readable. in order to I execute that. it. And then, yeah. I don't know what this is. I I was gonna ask what's F okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, I know the read the right, yeah. Read write, execute and execute the other one. Yeah, what? Uh, follow? Maybe it's a sim link follow, whether or not you're allowed to follow the sim link. Let's click even. Oh I um, I thought maybe I could be lazy. Hold on, let me yeah, I'll I'll look up in my other tool. It returns zero if the file has a requested access mode, otherwise negative one. Oh, here's stat. Okay, stat is probably not the best way to check file existence. Oh, but if you have a structure, so I guess access? They say not to use stat. Um, okay. So see access man page. Access man page. Access checks whether calling calling process can access path. If path name is a symbolic link, it is dereferenced. Oh, okay, yeah. So the F OK uh, is it doesn't it's say it's F OK test for the existence. F OK tests for the existence of the file. File. Oh. Okay, so I guess we do want F OK. <laughs> good thing, good thing we checked. <laughs> um, okay, so we want F and R and X. Uh, so we can do um, if access uh, the object of arg v zero and a combination of f ok uh, bitwise or with mm -hmm. r ok bitwise or with x ok if all of that is true mm -hmm. then we can just return um, is what it sounds like um, so that is ensure argv. So this should behave exactly the same. Uh, so let's, let's go make sure that it behaves exactly the same. Did I, uh, let me just double check if the boa is going. It is not. 
why is it not check tracking? Uh, did I? Thought I added. Maybe I just didn't add. Uh, what is test? Uh, I think that was just a. It's a text file, but just has it had some words in it, random words that I was using to test piping, like gotcha. with grep and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And I I wasn't putting the file path on the second one, the bin path. Uh, I was just like, oh god. Well, glad to help. Help me. We're already help making me. progress, so that's good. No, we are. We are. And I yeah, I'm learning more. That's that's the other point. Okay. Um, that's the point. <laughs> That's the whole point, yeah. Um, for some some people, some people are like, I don't, I'm, I don't care about this stuff. I'm just doing this because it's a gen ed requirement, and you know what? That's fine. <laughs> um, well, I mean, like these concepts don't go away. You know, <laughs> like it's yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, uh. Most of the people in my family don't know any of this stuff. Uh, they yeah, live lives yeah. that are full and meaningful. <laughs> they don't need to know. <laughs> that's that's a fair point. I just uh, know, like, the more I understand and, like, learn, especially with C, I'm finding it's, like, little things that help me with other stuff, so. That's cool. I'm, uh, I'm with you there. I, I also just, like, oh, whoops, I meant... I also just like knowing this stuff, um, but yeah, it's also, yeah. it like, it helps understanding um, other things. Yeah. So, now is this going? No, it's not going. Why is it not going? There we go. Oh, because I hadn't actually modified anything. Okay, cool. Um, I was just working with a student where uh, mm -hmm. I had this thing running, and it will automatically pull from the remote and then push to it. Um, and uh, I figured that if any student ever sent me like a, a thing with a Git repo inside of it already that it would just fail because I don't have permissions to theirs, so I didn't have to worry about that. Um, oh, no. Yeah, it turns out <laughs> that uh, the student had it set up to where the remote had his username and password embedded in mm. in the remote. Yeah, I didn't know you could do that, but I do now. So, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Um, so now I... Uh, now I explicitly create my own Git repo, or uh, yeah, it, like if there isn't one, uh, or if there is one, then I can uh, I I will uh, make the origin uh, like reset the origin so that like I'll rename origin to something else. Um, <laughs> that way I don't have to worry about accidentally. Oh yeah, another thing happened, which was. So I was accidentally committing and pushing those commits to his repo, um, oh, no. and I helped him undo that. Um, but then while I was writing, I, I thought that was all fixed, but I didn't think about oh. while I was writing, he made a commit and pushed, and then as I was doing stuff, it automatically updated my version of the file, because <laughs> mine will oh, automatically pull. My God. Yeah. And oh my god. So then I was like, oh, yeah, both directions are <laughs> are open. <laughs> wow. Um, so it'd be cool to, like, collaborate that way, but it's definitely not oh. It's uh, not cool when I didn't mean to do that. Uh, when no one was planning on it happening. Yeah, yeah. and it catches you. My surprise. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, so, yeah, so he was like, oh, that's weird. It's like it's passing more tests now. And I was like, oh, yeah, that is weird. Let's look into it. And then, oh, that's my code. Wait, that's my name. Why does it have my name in your repo? What the heck? 
Yeah. <laughs> that, so was, that was a crazy 10 minutes or so. Um, okay, so so it's going now. So it's tracking all the changes that I make. Um, so we have ensure, and it seemed like it was working. Um, I don't really have like a good way of testing, testing. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that still works, so that's cool. Um, and I don't know. Do you have a way of testing that? Do you have a framework I don't for know. this thing? No, no. Okay. There's, if you were interested in writing a bunch of tests uh -huh. for this that were automated, there's a thing called expect, which uh, is like okay. a thing that mind controls a shell. Oh. So you can tell it what to expect. That's why I think that's how it gets the name expect. You, you expect. tell it, uh, okay. the user will type in this and you expect this output. Um, and you can be more sophisticated, like you expect output that matches this regular expression, that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so I don't know. It passes this test. Um, so now let's go make it uh, do something more sophisticated. So if that didn't work, now we want to go through the path and look for this thing. Um, so let's first, uh, I guess I'll just print out something. Um, uh, blah, let's see, I'll do blah, um, not found need to look in path um blah not found need to look in path and then argv zero uh so i'm just gonna see if code the execution is actually getting to that point of the code mm -hmm. Alrighty, so command not found. Uh, huh. Okay, that's not what I expected. Um, let's put something here. Uh, looking for that. Okay, it does say looking for that. Does that mean it this said that that exists? Uh, oh, I see. Because you're not getting in the next part. Right, so it, okay. Huh. So I guess if access... Uh, does access return a zero if it works and then negative one if it doesn't work? I think that might be what happens. So it, we need to check whether this equals zero. So let's go back here. Return value. A zero is returned on success. Okay, cool. So if this is zero, then return. Uh, let's go try that. Um, make uh, bin ls looking for bin ls it found it okay and then this looking for that not found okay that's what I expected let's go yeah okay that makes sense Let's go. Um, <laughs> okay, so now we need to search through path. Um, so maybe this could be another function. Uh, search yeah. path, which takes in the thing that we want to search for in path. Um, what should it return? So I guess uh, look up path, and it could return... 
the full path that it finds yeah. Yeah. or null okay. if it didn't work. Yeah that, yeah, that makes sense. Argv0 goes there, and then we'll do... Um, so it should return a char star lookup path. Maybe there's a function that does this already. I feel like that is I a bet strong there possibility. Is. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, file name. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go look and not reinvent the wheel. Uh, <laughs> if we don't have to. Um, because I feel like I could do it, but I like that's not interesting. Um. Yeah, like why do it uh, if you don't have to? See, look up file name in path or find file name in path. How to extract file name from a path? No. Uh, find file name file in path. Find a file's path on Windows. Find file in folder by path. Um, wow, a lot of people looking for the path of a file on Windows. Using mm -hmm. command prompt, how to find the full path of a file in Linux. Cannot find this file. Um, C search path environment variable. How to use the environment variable. Really? Retrieving environment variables. Um, OK, so we do want to what about use the environment variable. Get env. Pretty sure this is the same in C. Um, C get env example. Maybe they'll what about, have. Yeah. What about Q file info? I found. I don't know. I don't know if. Q file info. I oh. linked it in chat. I don't know if that is what we want. I'm just searching a like a Linux manual page kind of directory tool. Okay. Um uh so this is if we are using Qt, which we could do. Uh we would Or I don't know if this I don't know if this has something that might help us find what something else to that might do it. I don't know. This is just I was searching for. Okay. Yeah. Um yeah, this this looks like uh if we are using the Q QT uh library or library. Yeah, I think it's also in C plus plus. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Let me search again. File path. I'm, uh I'm not exactly sure how hard it is to we can then I wasn't that. sure. I was like I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Okay. Um Okay. Keep looking. Yeah, keep looking. Uh path. Uh search. Library function get env. Another thing we could do is start writing it. Uh, oh, look at this. Get exec VE with path search. Somebody asked about that. Maybe somebody on Stack Overflow is like, yeah, this is the <laughs> function that you want to use. Um, or they'll say, I don't want to do your homework for you. Read the, <laughs> read the course material or something. I want to. Uh, uh, exec VE is the right choice, but it receives a path argument, not a file name. Meaning expects the first thing to be the entire path. I know I can parse. <laughs> this is exactly the situation we are in. Um, yeah. Uh, some systems may provide exec PE. 
uh, a Google search for exec PE shows a exec VPE, which shows options including at least one implementation, but it includes most of execs, exec VP in its own code. For those that do not, you can provide it for yourself. So I guess that it's the difference between uh, what was the other one? Exec. Exec V. Uh, exec V E versus Exec yeah. V P E. Exec V P E. So I guess the difference is the the P. It'll look it up in the path, maybe. Maybe. Uh. I mean that that sounds good. <laughs> All right, let's look up C exec V P E. It's probably going to be on a man page, including a, all, all the whole family of things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, C man exec V P E. really just want the man page. Here it is. Oh, geez. Uh, okay. So we have a whole family of things. Um, each of the functions it... in the exact family replaces the current process image with the new process image. The new process is constructed from a regular f executable file called uh, the new process image file. The file is either an executable object file or a file of data or for an interpreter. There is no return from a successful call to one of these functions because calling the process image, because the calling process image is overlaid by the new process image. The f execve uh, behaves like execve except that the file to be executed is specified by the file descriptor rather than by the path name. Okay, the file offset uh, of FD is ignored. An interpreter file begins with the with a line of the following form: uh, crunch bang path name argument, uh, where path name is the path of the interpreter. Uh, when a C program is executed, the result of the call is entered as a C language function as follows, uh, where argc and argv extern char and baron um, pointers to, in addition, the following variables, char star star and baron. Oh, okay, so there's... There's just a magic environ variable in C. Yeah, um, I, that one. That one I had to include in my header file, and they gotcha. they used it. Yeah, I, I had done some reading on that. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I have known that before about the magic. Mm -hmm. um, initialized to an array of thing. Da da da. Uh, it looks like exec VPE. Use the contents of that file. Um, so I was hoping that it would come up a little bit sooner. Okay, so maybe the word path is what we want. The path argument points to a path name that identifies the new the argument. The file argument is used to construct a path name that identifies the new path. If the file argument contains a slash character, it is used as the path name. Otherwise, the path prefix for this file is obtained by a search of the directories passed in the path environment variable. Uh, so we need to... So exec vp takes in a path environment variable. Uh, the environment is supplied typically by the shell. If the process image file is not a valid executable object, 
blah, use the contents of that file as standard input to the shell. In this case, the shell becomes a new process image, the standard color conforms, okay. So, the envp argument is an array of character pointers to null terminated strings. These strings constitute the environment for the new process. Okay, so where is that specified? Exec L E ends with arg n. So exec L E, exec VP, exec VP E. So the, oh, it's the E. The E is the supplying the environment. Environment, okay. Um, which, what is the one that you call exec V E? -E. Oh, wait. So you already, but you already passed the environment and it's not working. Right. So what am I, yeah, what am I doing wrong? Is it not working? Did I ever try just ls by itself? I don't, I don't think that works. Uh, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't work. I am not found. Uh. So, is USR bin, okay, so it is, that is on my path, and that's the one that's being used. Uh... Uh, so that is So this, this is using exec ve, mm -hmm. and this person's having that issue. And then the response is to use exec vpe, but then, okay, so what was the difference between exec ve and exec vpe? So here, is exec v okay so const exec v e this is called a path path and okay this and that one one's called a file. file is that the only difference char it const arg v the same yes. arguments okay so then <laughs> okay so then maybe the answer is to put uh the letter p right there are and you for real <laughs> maybe um, let's go look up gonna, and sure. Uh, I'm gonna throw up. If that's like, do you have to do it everywhere? Like for any every exact call, you need to be doing the the yeah VPE. So do you have more than one? Oh, uh, you do. I think we I think we do. Okay, yeah, exec VPE. Yeah, you probably need to do it everywhere. Uh, the. I'm guessing that's not like the default because it would be slow. I don't. Uh oh. Uh, exec v p e. Did you mean exec v p? No, oh, there's like a c v p e. Wait, 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 wait. Isn't that? I thought that was. That's what we want to put in, right? Exec v p e. No, you're right. Exec v p e. Exec. 
VPE. Um, okay. So maybe exec VP then. What is because that one also calls it file. Uh, but that one doesn't have the environment. Wait, does it? No. No. That one doesn't have. Yeah. So. Uh. Maybe it's from here and you don't have that? That would be... Oh, maybe. Oh, like I'm... Here? Uh, oh, maybe. Unistada. No, you have it. Uh... Hmm. So, it's saying implicit declaration of exec VPE. Huh. Ah. <laughs> so what happened? Look. You just remade. Oh, it's working now. So really? So I'm not sure what this warning is about. I didn't rebuild. I noticed that it was a warning. Um Oh, oh, it wasn't it was just yeah, a heads so it, up. It's still okay. built. Uh it's still made an executable. And it's still executing, so I tried ls and that worked. But then why are we getting a warning about an implicit declaration of exec vpe? We pound included the other file, so it should be there, I thought. So this includes new shell, but what if we just pound include unistida.h? Then what? No, it still doesn't like that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, why? Why am I getting this? Oh, maybe it's maybe that's not where it's defined. Uh, on my system. Do you? What do you get if you do no, that? No, so you get the same. So warning. I did exactly. I get the same warning, but then when I try to do ls, I get an error. Did you uh what? exec vpe? Did you do it everywhere? Like there's exec. multiple places. I think I got them all because okay. if I search exec um, ve. Exec VPE. Yeah, I only have one and it's it exists comment where I have a comment. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then that's Yeah, so I have three exec VPEs now. So it doesn't work for you. Or did it build? Oh no, it was it did. It just it's giving me the, the comments I left from earlier. My bad. Um it says it's not so it says it's not found. Need to look oh, in it path. Did work. That's that's it did work. I just yeah. still have those uh print messages. That's my bad. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I I assumed oh that's still true. <laughs> yeah. I removed them. But, yeah, that that was a smarter call. Um but so now uh... if I do LS I Oh my gosh! <laughs> nice. But uh, I would have, so I would have never known that. Okay, so this is this at least helps me. Like, this is a good tangible. Like, look at the difference between exec v ve and all the exec. There are. <laughs> yeah, like it. Yeah, it does. It does make a difference. I. But then my question is. Did they, 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 I think even in the example they were using, ex they were using exec VE, which is weird. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, Good to know. Yeah. It, uh, it looks, so I'm, so you are also getting a warning when you use, uh, yes. when you build. So yes. that makes me think that like maybe exec VPE is not like as standard as the other ones or something um so mm -hmm. it hasn't so it's not in unistida maybe it's in a different header file or something um let's see if we can find out where that is what see what what header file yeah vp e 
Yeah, let's try that. Uh... It says on this one to use the Unis to do. Huh. Then why uh, is it giving a warning? Um, let's try searching for this. Whoops. This implicit declaration of exec PE. Yeah, let's try searching for that. Whoops. Attempting to use this, but getting a get implicit declaration error. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Implicit. Um, when you're trying to use that has incorrect types, however, I'm pretty sure that I'm supplying the correct arguments. Int exec vp, as described here, this is part of my code. Someone define, oh, it's a, okay, so it is in there, but it's a part of, it's a GNU extension. So we oh, need it to, is what? I don't know what that, what does that mean? So, so. So the GNU like, project mm -hmm. is a project that aims to, it, they write a lot of code and uh, the you can use their code as long as you say that you are using their code. Um, and then I think if you do that, your code, uh, you can uh -huh. use their code under their license, and their license oh. says you're allowed to use our code as long as you don't restrict the use of your code. Right, right. You keep it open source. Yeah. 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 So, uh, let's try that. Uh, I think we actually want to put that at before this. Before. Um, so what happens is in the included, uh, header file, there's probably a section that has, um, a thing that says if this is defined then include the definitions or include the the header the signatures for functions like exec vpe and it gets that get your yeah so that's and then, that does get yeah that gets rid of that implicit declaration so now it's yeah so oh, it, it's, it does it's reading rebuilt yeah it? oh, i just wow. ran it cool. yeah make yep okay cool yeah yeah so uh, so now, if we want to use that function, we have to let other people use our code, just like we're using this, their code, the GNU's project. Their additional code. Yep. Right. Um, so they just wrote, a, they wrote additional code, and then, uh, you're, you're just adding that, like, library to the, like, uh, unisted library, right? Like, it's just yeah. like a, like, chaining off of that, basically? Yeah, so if we if we go look at the Unis did a header file wherever it is on the file system, it'll probably yeah. have some sections that are yeah surrounded by if this exists, then include yeah. these header definitions. Um, okay, that that makes sense. Okay, and it uh it ran anyway, which makes me think um that the executable that we are linking against has those functions. We just didn't know at compile time that it had those functions. So we yeah. just kind of, like, or we didn't know at compile time what the type of those functions was. So the object file okay. has this label, uh, exec VPE. It has that label in it somewhere. Right. Uh, uh, here. It has this label somewhere. And... Mm -hmm. But in the object file, you don't have type info, so the assembler was like, I don't know what that means. I'm going to take see. it for granted that you're calling it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and we were. Yay! So, so that worked. Okay, so, uh, so, yeah.
Um, I'm actually a huge fan of the GNU project. I think uh, that's their their ideas are cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so if I want to type ls instead of bin ls, I think we have done that now. Yay. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, so so then another one I was thinking of to like add functionality to my shell as part of like making it better. Um, I was thinking of like the the change directory command. Um, but now I don't know. I I still ass I assume I I still have to write code to do that. Um, well, let's find out. Uh, yeah. So cd dot dot. Nope. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, and so uh, I had uh, looked quit. at I, I I had looked at I think a function that's like C H D I R like churder churder. <laughs> churder. Yeah. Um, so which C D for me returns nothing. So I think that means that it's a built in um so because if I type CD okay. and stuff, it works. So, uh, so it's oh, so wait. it's doing it something. Does? Oops, new shell. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes my. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So here I typed CD dot dot. And okay. uh, I'm running a shell inside of my text editor, and I think it sees commands like this, and the the autocomplete from my text editor thinks that it should be one level higher than the actual directory um, that I'm in right now. Uh, so right now if I type CD space and then hit tab, it gives me, in my text editor, it gives me a, t a file completion that is for the oh. directory above where I'm actually at. And I think that's because oh. the text editor is keeping track of what directory it's in separately than the uh, shell. and that causes uh they get out of sync so my text editor saw this and thought oh i must go it must be that i should go up a directory um and my shell uh saw this inside of another shell so the internal shell didn't uh the outer shell didn't go up a directory but my text editor didn't inner know shell. the inner shell didn't know about that uh or sorry the outer shell <laughs> um anyway the way to fix it is to cd uh pwd and then we get a full path and then i can cd to that full path and now my text editor notices that and and knows exactly where it should go um and that will be the same as what my shell thinks it's at. Not a huge deal. Um, I was trying to go into new shell and then continue doing stuff, but I got sidetracked because when I tried to tab complete, it was completing the directory above. Um, oh. So that's, that's why, I, and I noticed that it was because of this up here and yeah. Um, so yeah, let's try to make CD work. Uh, right. So, which CD still returns nothing, and I think that means it's a built-in, which means we need to uh, write CD as mm -hmm. a built-in command, um, which means we need to detect CD uh and then i think like you were saying use chdir in c 
Yeah. C C H D I R, and maybe we can just pass it whatever argument comes after this. Um, now I'm kind of curious. What happens if I do this? Too many arguments. Too many. Okay. Uh, what if I do? Uh, I guess if I do something that doesn't exist, then it says no such file or directory. So that's easy enough. Um, now I'm kind of curious. What does uh, yeah. chdir do? Oh, right. But looking up stuff in this manual is annoying. <laughs> um, I should figure out how to look up, uh, <laughs> instead of just browsing the web, um, if I just looked up, I have the man pages on my computer, so I should be able to do this, but yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, for now though, it's actually effective enough to do C man ch dir. Um, uh, I want the man page here. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the one I've got. Yeah. Feature test macro requirements for glibc. Um, so we've got. I have maybe. I've got maybe yeah. a dumb question for you. Okay. What is? Why is it? Uh, why is it chdir and then two within the parentheses? Is it like two arguments or like two? Yeah. Uh, at the top, it says like when when it at the top of oh, these here? pages. Yeah. This yeah, because sometimes what section it's in. Um, okay and i don't I figured that was a dumb question i don't know what the why I, I i only know that much i don't really know like what the different sections are um right but there's but, i do know that sometimes the same okay. thing up shows up in different sections and so yeah, yeah. it's it's important to know that the difference sometimes but i don't know what those right are. Um, okay thank you thank yeah. you is that is that just like Linux manual like um, formatting or like styling? That's how they do it. Yeah, um, and okay. there's a way to specify which uh, when you on the command line when you search when you it, type man whatever you can. I think yeah. you say man to chdir, and that looks it up specifically in section two. Yeah, um, you should be able to do this, uh, and you're because you're doing the shell. Uh, I guess it is in your text editor, but your text editor actually has a separate shell, and it's not trying to run it as a buffer within the <laughs> text editor. Um, but yeah, you should be able to use right. that, and then you can use J and K yeah. to scroll up and down. Um, and that's yeah, different yeah. than if you, if you went over to the yeah. right and grabbed the scroll bar and scroll up and down. Um, the shells oh, scroll this will is... Actually yeah this It'll, is like the whole terminal and then this is just the man pages right that i'm yeah exactly so you're Got it. j and k send commands to the pager uh program that's yeah. running right now yeah 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 and I've, I've looked at their help menu and done some of the things to actually like search it and use it when i've been like i'm i'm gonna use this and then, <laughs> then you get lazy <laughs> yeah i used to think that I would do that, and then I never have. But I actually have yeah, gotten yeah. to the point now where I, I find myself wanting to just get the man page, um, and I don't want like the top three or four hits that are like some, um, tutorial Contents. about how to use whatever. And that used to be yeah. I would I would like that, but now I'm like, just give me the man page. I don't want to see the tutorials. I like it for for sometimes like just getting because it's all consistently laid out on like what is a return when there's an error what like libraries do you need like that's helpful yeah. i like that layout they, they and get then, right down to the information yeah. that you need and nothing that you don't care about like you exactly. see was invented in 19 blah 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 by <laughs> so and so and like that's really not important if i'm trying to look up how to use ch dir uh yeah. I just I'm just not the best with the with like navigating all of this, but but I have I have practiced some of it. Um, cool. Uh, yes. Um, okay. All right. So chdir. Um, actually, we we're not there yet in the in here. So let's um detect that there is a CD and come yeah. back to that. Yeah. So let's go. Let's yeah. go write the code uh for detecting that there is a CD. So. Um. What was it like built in? Yeah, with built-in yeah. command. 
All right, so then here we can do, um, I think I would change this to a series of else ifs to make sure that it only does one of them. That's smart, uh, yeah. CD, and then, or I guess it doesn't need to be else ifs if you, uh, if you do want to do something other than returning one, like, uh, run the hmm. chdir. Uh, and then return one. So if it's a CD, then uh, do chdir on argv, oops, argv1. Like, this is uh, the optimistic version. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's fine. It'll probably work. Uh <laughs> <laughs> maybe we need maybe we should do something like uh checking that there is an argv1 for example uh that's that would be good right um, by the time we get here do we have a way of knowing if there was an argv1 it doesn't by the time we doesn't look get here yeah. i don't i don't think so yeah but i so but maybe built-in yeah. command is just supposed to return whether it was a built-in command. Okay, so it looks like it it returns whether it was a built-in command, and then if it was a built-in command, it seems like it just returns, and what does that mean? It returns from eval, and then it goes up here which means it goes and grabs another it prints another prompt and then evals the next prompt so it seems like if it was a built-in command that the opportunity to do whatever the command is uh is right is during this um so yeah okay so we maybe we maybe need to pass in uh how many arguments were there in argv Unless, actually, so another thing that might be the case is maybe argv is a null terminated array. Mm -hmm. Is that the case, or do you know? We can find out. So just like, you know how I, strings, I, I, yeah. Yeah, String, yeah strings have, all, always end with the null yeah. character. Yeah, and... So you could have something similar with an array of pointers where right. you have a bunch of pointers and then you have um at the very end at the very end the you last have one a, is null yeah is the null pointer yeah. and that way you don't need to also pass in uh the length you could just say I think Go ahead I think that's what we were doing when we did this, because when I was going okay. through it again, I'm like, this is basically a bunch of pointer arithmetic, but I never, like, done that. Okay. Um, um, but I'm not positive. Let's look into, so argv here, how does it get its value? So if argv is null, so it looks like maybe it is uh, null terminated. So uh, yeah. we ignore empty lines. So that, that makes me think that, yes, it's it's null terminated. Um Let's go, where does argv get its value from? Um, Maybe. Here. Uh, yeah, parse line, that's what I was thinking. Maybe. But this Am isn't I in the right? passing the address of argv. Oh, but argv is an array of pointers. Yeah. So it's an array of pointers. So we already, I'm in eval right now. You're asking. Okay, eval. Yeah, yeah. Where? Um. I mean, uh, parse line would be the next place to go. I was just trying to figure out. Um. Mm -hmm. Here we're not uh, passing the the address of argv um but uh up here we created an argv that just has a bunch of space in it and so we we're not in parse line we're not reserving new space and oh. pointing at that new space um, okay so inside of parse line we're just modifying this array uh um, okay and is there 
yes, it's null terminated. This line right here. Arg v arg c equals null. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. Because uh, that's at that's at the that's at the very last value, and then it's equal to null. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So arg mm -hmm. c will be the number of things that were parsed. So. Right. Yeah. So it's the first. Yeah. Okay. So then back in built in, we can rely mm -hmm. on it's null terminated. So because it's null terminated, we also know that that by the time we get here argv0 will have something in it and argv1 will maybe be null and that might mm -hmm. be okay i guess uh now is the time to go look up uh what does chdir do if you give it null um mm -hmm. uh let's go find out i wouldn't be surprised to find that it handles it uh Let's find out. So chdir2 const char star path um, changes the current working directory of the calling process to the, s the directory specified in path. Um, so maybe that's all we need to do. On success, zero is returned. Uh, on error, negative one is returned. And error no is set appropriately. Oh, okay, so yeah, we probably should check the return value. So, uh, if this uh, ah, this returns something other than zero, then we want to uh, call p error on chdir uh, and. Set variable C basic offset to four. Okay. Uh, cool. Um. So. So if churder arg v one returns, what was it? Negative one or just anything but zero? Anything but zero. Zero is success. Anything else is some okay. sort of error. Uh, and then okay. we can print that chder failed. P error, uh, I think it uses the error no that has been set, and it also gives you an opportunity to say like what, what it, what you were trying to do when it failed. So maybe we'd put just mm -hmm. CD. Oh, CD, CD failed. Yeah. Lol. Uh, let's see what <laughs> happens bad. when we do that. Um, so make CD dot dot. <laughs> it seems like it worked. Yeah. New shill, new shell, ls, uh, pwd, cool, looking good, cd, asdf, cd failed, lol, <laughs> no such file in the directory, <laughs> yeah, so, um, so yeah, we, here you would put cd, um, I feel like, yeah, I feel like, uh, I would rather like a silly mode, uh, <laughs> shell option turn on silly mode and then yeah. you get like a lol <laughs> lol pwn <laughs> <laughs> idiot yeah <laughs> your code's bad feel bad and, and you, so, you smell bad and your singing is terrible yeah yeah so then let me um, hold on let me, let me and then quit. when you cd successfully it's like wow good job you're amazing Uh, okay, so then I do make, and then oh, use the CS is not voltage is just right. <laughs> so what did I do wrong? Uh, can it be working? Um, is there a directory called go go go? I made one. Oh, you did. Um, I just made one. Go go go! Yeah, no such right. Because if I do, if I do L, well, that's not working. Oh no! Let me split. Okay, make. Okay, so now it's telling me now it's working. Okay, CD. And go, then go, I go, do go? C. 
go, go, go. No such file address. And then now it's broken. What did uh, I do? Type PWD. Uh, oh, do CD let me go back. Again. CD. Bad address. Uh, CD space. Or actually, yeah. Type PWD now. Let's see what it is. Okay. Type LS. Let's see if you see. Go, go, go. Okay. Type okay. CD, go, CD. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. And then hit enter. And then type PWD. PWD. Oh. oh okay. So well, then, oh, I'm printing all the time. Uh, yeah. The, the check here is wrong, I guess. Do you have the logic backwards? Or what do you have? You have. I have C. Oh, oh I think I put. No. Yeah, you CH'd her yeah. twice. I CH'd her twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. <gasps> so. Just... I get rid of this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't even notice it. <laughs> okay. I didn't ignore it. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah, try try that out. <sighs> so, uh, if you had made a go 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 slash go go go. Oh, then, like, uh, okay. Then that would have worked, but it would have, uh, it would have gone in too deep, and then yeah. instead of one deep, and, and then that would have been confusing. <laughs> <laughs> um, good times. All right, so. And then there's nothing in it. Okay, cool. All right, cool, cool. So that one is done. Let's see what else. Uh, but yeah, so it seems as though just handing off the command to PWD or to CHDIR does what the built in CD does. So, uh, so like there's no special cases where we have to check. Does, right. Does it exist? It looks like it, it already does that. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of uh, new functionality, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have... It did not work sad. Oh my god, so yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> Piping uh, turns out... Uh, it was working. It yeah. It was working. Needed the whole path both yeah. sides of pipe, but not anymore. Not um, anymore. We fixed that. Yeah. Looks up full. Uh, looks up file name in path. So don't need whole file name or a whole path anymore. Um. Yeah, happy. That's so accurate. Yeah. I thought I thought this was gonna take way longer because I thought I had some <laughs> really serious like, I mean, bad problems. We yeah. are we are leaning on other people's code a lot. Do you want to yeah. go implement what they did, uh, or do you want to think of other things to do, or call it a day? Uh, we could do more learning. That would be cool. I'm like I'm thinking. Um, okay. Ooh, that's that's the real hard problem. What thinking? Yeah. <laughs> what? I really thought that I had like because I had gone through it and tried. Oh man, because the the thing that was confusing me is I was like, why is it not even recognizing the commands at this point? Why is my pipe like it's just and I'm not even getting a piping error? Well, now I know. Um. Awesome. Maybe like uh So there was one thing that we uh thought about a little bit, which is um an mm -hmm. arbitrary number of pipes. Okay. Uh that seems like it would be difficult. Uh <laughs> with lots of learning. Yeah. 
I don't know. Uh, I don't know how hard that is. Um, I also didn't know how hard these would be. I am uh, quite surprised that we got through them. And it's I know, right? <laughs> I know. Um, I thought this was going to take so much longer. I was like, this is always like a a black box. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we could go into an arbitrary number of pipes. I think that might require a significant re-architecting of how how the functions uh work. Okay. Um like how function calls are made. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't even know. So the this would require something about uh find let's see. piping something or other. I really don't know. Something it's going to do uh, there's going to be something with pipes with uh the file descriptors where mm -hmm. each command needs to be set up with file descriptors that are set to the next command's file descriptors. And if we have an right. arbitrary number of those, right now we've hard coded either none or one of mm -hmm. those and uh if we wanted to do an arbitrary number i think the if we if we do want to go down this path like the first thing to do would be to do one two or three and then maybe one two three or four and then look for patterns um that seems yeah that's that's uh that's how i would start on that um or uh we could review that's another thing we could do we could review how the current code does what it does um cuz even the piping that it currently does i remember not being super clear on uh so mm -hmm. the fd I know, so there's dupe two, and then we close one of them, and I don't really know yeah. exactly which one we close or why uh, why it's bad for two processes to have the same file descriptor. Right. What exactly is bad about that? I mean, that sounds bad, but it's why but why is it bad? right? Right. Uh, and I guess now that I'm saying that out loud, that also seems like. I don't know how long that would take either. Uh, yeah. That also seems like it could take a very long time. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, so review how current piping works. Piping hot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I know I know we had I like I had moved after after we had the last time we talked about this and we, yeah. uh, when the piping was broken, we moved right here when we closed this pipe. You were telling me uh, we could close it at the beginning since we don't use that side of the pipe in the um, in the child program. Like the child is uh, where did, where did I move it to? Hold on. Yeah, right here we moved it. We moved it here. So after after we fork and we're in the child, we we don't use the read side of the pipe. Yeah, that's right. Since the child's only going to write, and so that was like where we had left off on this discussion. Um, hmm. I mean, we could take, yeah, we could take a look at that, though, and, like, talking through this portion of the code. <laughs> okay. Um, where, what line are you on? 310? Yeah. Okay, so... Dupe information about the right side of pipe into standard out. So we're duping... Dupe to... P... Wow, I really don't remember. Yeah, we can go back further and like talk through all of this, yeah. So find the pipe symbol 
and set that one to null. Mm -hmm. Then we arg index arg two index arg e arg index arg index arg two index. Oh, this we're was... shifting everything. Bingo, yeah, yeah, because of the pipe. I see. Um, argv2, so we're assigning into argv2 all the stuff from argv. Got it, after the pipe, okay. Right, We yeah, um, exactly that shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so then, if pipe p, what is p int? Uh, if pipe p unable to open a pipe, okay, and p is just an integer array. So I guess I would start by, let's, let's look into what exactly does the man page say about pipe. Pipe, yeah. And to pipe. Um, pipe, create a pipe. What does that mean? Pipe two. Mm -hmm. um, pipe two takes in flags. Uh, so pipe creates a pipe. It's a unidirectional data channel that can be used for inter-process communication. The array pipe FD, uh, which okay. is the argument. File yeah. Pipe FD, yeah, the argument, and it should be exactly two. Um, Unidirectional data channel creates a pipe, a unidirectional data channel mm. that can be used for interprocess communication. The array pipe FD is used to return two file descriptors referring to the ends of the pipe. Uh, so pipe FD0 refers to the read end of the pipe. Pipe FD1 refers to the write end of the pipe. The data written to the right end of the pipe is buffered by the kernel until it is read from the read end of the pipe. For further details, see pipe 7. Okay. Let's go there. Uh, pipe. Overview of pipe and FIFO. Pipes and FIFOs, also named pipes. Also known as named pipes. Okay. <laughs> also known as named pipes. Oh, like file in file. Okay, so those are named pipes. Yeah, I was like, okay. also known as or named pipes. No, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, not right. yeah, yeah. What are they saying yeah. here? Um, okay, yeah. so named pipes provide a unidirectional interprocess communication channel. Um, a pipe has a read end and a write end. Data written to the write end of the pipe can be read from the read end of the pipe. A, a pipe is creating use, created using pipe two, which creates a new pipe and returns two file descriptors, one referring to the read end and the other referring to the write end. Pipes can be used to create a communication channel between related processes. See pipe two for an example. Uh, oh, let's go there. <laughs> um, uh, a FIFO, first in, first out, it has, uh, has a name within the file system called make, Created using make FIFO, and it mm -hmm. is opened using open to. Okay, so we could create something that looks like name within the file system. So it looks like a file, and we can use yeah, open on it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I, we I did that in like a we we did that with our like chat program demonstration. Okay, and so yeah. we made two pipes, and we named each one, and like it it was working the same way, but we did it with yeah, we did it with the make FIFO command instead of using uh, sockets at some point? 
Yeah, because it was just like it was like they weren't chatting. They weren't chatting on a network. They were just talking to each other within the shell. Like it was like within you're talking to yourself. Machine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And okay. so th- do that. Two pipes were created, but it was using that that uh, they were they were files within your 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 directory, right? Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. So any process may open a FIFO, assuming the file permissions allow it. Read end is open using read only flag. The write end is using write only flag. Um, note, although FIFOs have a path name in the file system, IO on the FIFOs does not involve operations on the underlying device, if there even is one. IO on pipes and FIFO. The only difference between pipes and FIFOs is the manner in which they are created and opened. Once these tasks have been accomplished, the I.O. is exactly the same. If a process attempts to read from an empty pipe, then it will block until data is available. If a process attempts to read from, or to write to a full pipe, it will block until the until sufficient amount of data has been read that it can complete. Non-blocking I.O. is possible with F control uh, communication. So we don't need that. Uh, communication channel between provided by a pipe is a byte stream. There is no concept of message boundaries. Uh, OK. So if all the descriptors referring to the right end of the pipe have been closed. Oh, OK. So there can be more than one file descriptor referring to the right end of a pipe. So. so you- that's... So you can have multiple files writing to a pipe? I guess. That's what okay. that sounds like, yeah. Okay. Um and okay, so yeah, I guess that I guess we kind of already knew that because we were having to close uh one of them on one side. Right. And the other side still had it open. It was uh, the same file descriptor. So this is being oh, closed right. in the child. Uh-huh. And the parent, I guess, still has it open and writes to P0. Let's go see if that's true. Does the parent write to P0? Um, close P1. So the... This one's only closing P1, and is P0 is duplicated to here. I don't know. I don't know what dupe two does. <laughs> Uh, we're copying this file descriptor into our into, own, uh, standard I, in? Yeah, that's, that's what I, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So, our own standard in is, that must be the right end, because, or no, that's the read end. Yeah, pipe FD0 is the read end of the pipe. Okay. So the the child closed the read end of this pipe because we don't want the child to read input that was intended for the parent. Okay, yeah, that but makes sense. We do want the child to read from stuff that the parent outputs. So then that should mean that P0 or P1 gets duplicated into 1. Do we dupe to FD in? Yeah, dupe to P1 to 1. And that's. Wait, where is that? That's around 329. Oh, I went to. Ah, uh, here it is. Um, 
why are our line numbers so different? I I have a bunch uh from earlier when we were writing. Oh yeah, the intro okay, cool, Yeah, I, I like might... I left mine here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um. Okay. Yeah. So here we are copying from the the read end or the right end. Right, copying from the right end. Processes, right. Yeah. And then we close this one, and we still have this one, which is a reference to that end of the pipe. Uh, and we want this one to be that end of the pipe and not this one because all of the code that the child writes assumes that this is where the right end of the pipe is going to be. Or sorry, yeah. The r Yeah. So... Okay, so we create a pipe and then we link one end of the pipe. So the the read end of the pipe is P0. Right? Or is that the right end? The We're read end is P0. End of the pipe. Yeah, okay. So the child yeah. doesn't need to read from that pipe. This is a pipe between the parent, from the parent to the child. Yeah, yeah. So the... Wait, that seems like the child should be reading from that pipe, <laughs> uh, doesn't it? But it works the way that it is, right? It this is working, and uh, this is this matches up to the way, um, like the assignment when it was done, like the answer, like guide. So, okay. yeah. So, am I don't I... know. If drawing a picture would help. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um, but, uh, okay, so do I have paper? I do. Do I have a way of drawing that I could share at the same time? Um, I don't know if, like, the awful, the, the little, like, the whiteboard would work. I don't know. seem to remember that there's like an artist mode okay artist mode artist mode enabled in current buffer uh, okay i don't know what that means <laughs> artist mode read only so if i go to a scratch and then i enable artist mode Okay, I'm not sure how artist mode works. It would be cool if we yeah, that's that, okay. But, uh, let's go to the drawing board. Um, yeah. Okay, so we got um, we got man to do uh pipe. Uh, man, seven pipe, hippie, hippie long stocking. So pipe seven, pipe, uh, creates a thing. So this was talking about how to read and write. So which end of the pipe is which? I think we have actually do want the section two. Pipe, yeah, pipe zero is read end. Pipe will... one is right i will remember that eventually so <laughs> pipe fd zero refers to the read end pipe fd one refers to the right end of the pipe 
it just, no, this it stuff sounds takes weird. time. It it takes time. Yeah. Type fd zero equals read and pipe fd one equals write right yeah end of the pipe and then we have the um so we want to set up the parent and the child with a pipe in between them yeah 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 and something like that so this will be so we have a single pipe we want the child to be able to read stuff from the parent but we want the parent to be able to write to the child i guess i, I think so so the parent needs to write to the child uh parent writes to child so that so that pipe is that's the pipe so the right end of the pipe in the parent needs to remain open right and the child doesn't need to write to this pipe. yeah 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 so, so that's why we close it right away yeah closes the right end of the pipe so the child closes right end of that pipe and then the parent doesn't need to read anything from the child right okay so the uh so the parent closes the read end of that pipe okay and then so the parent writing to the child is one end of the pipe and then the child writes to that pipe is that right that is what the code says i believe yeah yeah so why does the child write to that pipe? Why not? Yeah, why does the child write to the pipe? For dupe to FD out. Where did FD out come from? Um, let's Here. see. Uh, we're outputting output file name? Wait, where does that come from? We write that in... Hold on. Uh, I think that comes from... Now we start the second child. So it's after the piping. Um, handle handle, file, handle command. pipe command. Yeah. Has pipe. Output file name here. Address of uh, get greater than. Oh, I see. So if the output should be redirected into a file. Mm -hmm. Right, I hadn't really been thinking about that. Um, so the the child should be writing to this file if there's oh okay yeah so there's gonna be there could be like arbitrary combinations about that as well. Uh, With the piping. Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. where where does input come from? Where does output go to? Um, right. So this seems like it could could be super complex. Um so then 
um, greater than writes to the file instead of the screen. Yeah, when you're redirecting problem with, with the with input file yeah. name, get less than problem with output file name. Uh, these are very descriptive so names. That that's very nice. Yeah, um, <laughs> those were ones that we wrote. <laughs> yeah, get less. That was our than, error checking. I thought I yeah I figured this. Yeah. Um, they're very very verbose, <laughs> but in a good way. Yeah. Um, get less than like maybe after getting more comfortable with with this, I might start to do shorter names. But I, oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, get less than input file name. So that's if there is a less than, then we put yes that there okay so we so there's a possibility that we are reading from a input file name and we could also be writing to an output file name yeah. um so that complicates the whole pipe handling thing mm -hmm. um so let's go back to uh handle pipe command uh so we were in the middle of tracking. <laughs> so we have, okay, so we have P. P is a pipe. And the we're forking to create, this is the, this is the parent, isn't it? The first process yeah. that we, we fork is going to be the parent. And we want to set up communication between the parent and the, the child. The parent and the child. But we're saying if. PID equals fork equals zero. Isn't zero right? So uh, the child. Yes. Okay. The shell is starting yeah. two processes. Yeah. And I think the first process that the shell starts is the parent of the second process that the shell starts. Okay. So we're gonna have um. If we do uh, ls pipe cat, mm -hmm. then we start this process. Uh, that's here. Mm -hmm. We fork, and then this is setting up. Whoops, I keep doing that. Um, setting up. Mm -hmm. We're now setting up uh, ls. So let's label on the drawing over here. Yeah. This one is ls, and then uh, this one is cat. Cat. Okay. So we want. Uh, so when we do when we call fork, the the parent process. Uh, when execution is right here. Mm hmm. That is. We are in the shell, and mm -hmm. the user has just typed in ls pipe cat and hit enter, and we have figured out that there is a pipe and that the first thing is ls. Right. And we're about to start that, that ls process as a child process. As a child process, okay. And we want to make sure that it is able to communicate to this other thing, this cat process. Mm-hmm. So uh when so the when we get inside of here and we say mm -hmm. okay this is the child it's the child of the shell which is ls oh okay and ls is the parent to cat oh okay. so this drawing is incomplete there's one more thing which surrounds all of this right which is uh, the shell. So as far as the shell is concerned, ls is a child process. So that's why here we have this PID fork equals zero. Oh, okay, that means we're going into a child process, but that's ls. But well, that's ls. Okay, okay, okay. And we want that thing's... Uh, we created a pipe that will assist in communication between the parent and the child. It kind of seems like the parent writes to the child. The child doesn't need to write to the parent. The child yeah. needs to read from the parent. 
read from the parent. Okay. So the child does need the read end, but this child needs the read end of the was... file descriptor. But but the do pipe. you need? Yeah, do you need a pipe to do? Because it's you need it's unidirectional, right? Like or or like one way data yeah, transmission. What... What they yeah. mean by unidirectional, it's two unidirectional things. Uh, okay. So the... There's always uh, a read and write end. Yeah, so... And that's like each each one is, is transmitting data one way. Uh, the, It's unidirectional because one side of the pipe okay. writes and the other side of the pipe reads. Right. So in that sense, it's unidirectional. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the parent is going to write to the right end of that pipe, and the child right. is going to read from the read end of that same pipe. And then, if the child wants to, if the child then wants to uh, read from the parent. Would you would you need another pipe? Uh, the child reads from the, the read end of that same pipe. So there's one oh, pipe. Same. Okay. Right. The parent writes to, and the child reads from. So the so, one but pipe then if the child two ends though. Right, What's right, right. But then, but then, if you want to swap, which one is using the pipe? Like in order, to, like, is it like once they connect, are they stuck, and then you create another pipe to the calls to re read and write are blocking so uh -huh. when if the child let's say that cat uh gets to the part where it can read stuff before ls has written anything okay cat will call read on the file descriptor that is the read end of this one pipe this one pipe got it okay and will block It'll just wait there until LS has written enough stuff for it to read. Actually read. Something. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, and they said that it's not, uh, I forget what the phrase they used was, but it, it isn't necessarily the case that LS is done writing before read reads anything. So it's more like UDP than TCP. Uh, it maybe that isn't helpful. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. So it's um. It is. When, when, the parent writes. Uh huh. It isn't the child is able to read a partial message. The child doesn't necessarily read everything the parent wrote. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. You would, you would have to set up um, some extra, excuse me, uh, you'd have to set up a little bit of extra, like, message mm -hmm. boundary stuff or something, like, maybe every so, every eight bytes you write a null byte or, I, I don't know exactly, but any, um, I think, I feel like I'm understanding this better now, so that's cool. Um, do you feel like you're understanding it better? No, I do. No, 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 I do. Okay, cool. Like, I, yeah, I did not under... The, the one thing that I was definitely missing was that the the true parent in all of it is the shell. But that that makes sense because that's what... And the shell... The shell's job is coordinating this pipe between yeah. LS and CAT. Right. Uh, so... Yeah, I also, that's, that was, uh, I only realized that now as we were t talking, so. Talking cool. through it? No, yeah. but I, I, I know you need to draw pictures with this, because it's, otherwise it's too hard. <laughs> pictures are great. Um, I really wish I knew how to draw pictures inside of Emacs. I also wish I could play videos in, in here, because when I tutor mm -hmm. people, every once in a while, like, this morning I was tutoring somebody with Pygame, and... The Pygame window launches, and then the screen recording doesn't, like, is oh. unusable. It doesn't, like, we can't tell from here what happened. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice if it showed a little window inside of here. I yeah. don't know how hard that would be. Hopefully not that hard. Uh, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe I'll get that going at some point.
Um, <laughs> it is possible, though, I know at least that much, because I've seen other people do crazier looking things. Um, right. Like run a full on, like, you know how I have the browser? Uh, mm hmm. I've seen yeah. people run full on graphical browsers inside of Emacs. Oh, wow. Uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, if I, so, so the, this is the, I'll just put a comment that's like, this is LS. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so we say that we started, oh, yeah. I think we don't really need this. You don't need you don't need this. I had just I I was getting just, it to work. Oh, cuz yeah. you were like, "Ah, why is this uh not working?" Yeah, so yeah. I pulled in the the okay. example print statements to see what was going on, and I'm like, "Well, my pipe like it's happening." Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um let's see. Uh deleted leftover else statement relic of debugging cool. Uh Oh yeah. Start the I, that was another child. thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this one is uh cat Okay, so, uh, so ls, ls needs the right end of the pipe, because it's going to write to the pipe whatever information it has, it'll yeah. write to the pipe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it closes the read end because it's not going to read anything on this pipe. It is only writing whatever whatever it would output to standard out. It's gonna instead output to output this he, pipe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're that makes closing. Sense to me. Now this makes sense. The this is the read end of the pipe. The ls closes the read end. I wrote this note. Okay, pipe fd zero is the read end. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> so it's closing the read end of the pipe. Uh, we aren't going to use the read side. Yeah, so we had this note. I, yeah. I, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't really, I don't know if I really believed it before, like I do now. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, now you believe it. Okay, okay. Now okay. I believe. And this makes, uh. More sense. So, oh, no, this is, yeah, this, this also makes sense, but this is about, like, the, the input file name. Um, input file, file name does not exist. Uh, if input file name, so we we change the input for this process, uh -huh. but we're not worried about that right now. We're just worried about pipes. So pipes. the okay, yeah, yeah. the yeah. right end of the pipe is copied into ls's. Uh, so right, okay. Ls now, so this line means when ls does output, it'll go to the pipe. That's what this means. So this means so okay, hold on, wait, wait, wait. So Waiting. it's taking uh so it's taking this is the the right end of the pipe and this is standard uh standard out, right? Isn't that what the one stands for? In, within yes. dupe? Okay, so it's putting the standard output into the pipe, right end? Uh or do I have or is it the other way around? It's I think it is copying information Copies. from this side to this thing. Because right here we <laughs> close this one. So that makes me think that we copy from here into here. I know this and is then a we number, but the yeah. operating system translates that into some struct somewhere, I'm betting. I guess I don't yeah. know for sure. <laughs> um, but that seems like that's... Otherwise, I I don't know how this this would work. Uh, yeah. Like, what does it mean to copy an into an copy into an integer? Um, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um. So I guess we could go look at the man page for dupe two. And, yeah. Yeah. And confirm. So, uh, what I'm suspecting is this is a source and this is a destination. You know, it'd be that's interesting. What, we should. That's print what out. I'm thinking. What, yeah. what the actual number is because this pipe is should be two different numbers yeah right and yeah. so yeah we we could print out what the actual number is 
Uh, it should. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what exactly properties it will have, but it should be not zero or one. I'm. I'm betting uh, that it should be not a zero or a one. Yeah. Um. So yeah, let's go read dupe two. Uh, C man two. Wait, that just says dupe. Oh, dupe, dupe two, dupe three. Oh man. Yeah, it's uh, another one of these. Old file, so, new file. Yeah. So old file descriptor, new file descriptor, yeah. old file descriptor, new file descriptor, and flags. And flags. Okay. That's, uh, I think this here yeah. means that this is you need this. Their contribution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. The dupe system call allocates a new file system file descriptor that refers to the same file description as the old. So whoa, whoa, whoa hold on. <laughs> the dupe <laughs> system call allocates a new file descriptor that refers to. Oh, but that's not what we are doing. But maybe it dupe will be two. helpful. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. To read like sometimes. Well, I guess we could just. We could start reading this, but like I've had the experience where I like, oh, I'm not doing this one. I'm doing this one, and then I start reading this, and it says does exactly what dupe does. Oh, and it, it does. It does say that. It, <laughs> it does say that. There okay. you go. But right. instead, so, so let's guess, just read it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Uh, the dupe system call. <laughs> that's funny. The dupe system <laughs> call allocates a new file descriptor that refers to the same file open file description as the descriptor old fd for an exp explanation of file descriptions see open to i think i think it might be a good idea to read that also yeah. Yeah. um like what exactly is a file description i think i will come back to that let me put that on uh let's see uh we uh go back and read open man to open or what exactly is a file description yeah okay so um the new file descriptor number is guaranteed to be the lowest numbered file descriptor that was unused in the calling process okay so when we call pipe i wonder if that is also true so maybe the numbers will be two and three because zero and one were already taken the numbers for oh yeah yeah um, yeah pipe uh where is the actual call to pipe there it is okay cool uh let's do printf p0 equals percent d p1 equals percent d new line p0 p1 Okay, I guess we'll find out. Um, actually, I'll do it right now. Uh, <laughs> quit. Make. LS pipe cat. Three and four? Oh, two is standard error. Oh. Uh, right. But okay, yeah, three and four. Okay. So it works that same. Okay. So that's cool. Um. So the new file descriptor number is red. I feel like we did this before at some point. I, I vaguely remember that now. That mm -hmm. same like what? Oh yeah, standard error. Mm -hmm. um, the new <laughs> file descriptor number is guaranteed to be the lowest number of file descriptor that was unused in the calling process. After a successful return, and I know that was pipe and not dupe, uh, but I was just guessing that pipe somehow uses the same semantics yeah uh, that makes sense yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so after a successful return, the old and new file descriptors may be used interchangeably. Since the two file descriptors refer to the same open file description, they share file offset and file status flags. For example, if the file offset is modified by using lseq on one of the file descriptors, the offset is also changed for the other file descriptor. The two file descriptors do not share file descriptor flags, the close on exec flag. The close on exec flag, see, the close on exec flag for the dis, for the duplicate descriptor is off. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know what. What I don't know what that means, on but, exec it, does. but it. But I, I, I understand they're saying those. That is different between the two, and for the dupli So the duplicate descriptor is the. Which one counts as the duplicate? Is it the? Is it the new or the old? I assume new. Um. What is? Dupe. So dupe uh -huh. uh, takes in one argument. Right. And that's the uh, that's the old one. And I'm guessing right. it returns the new one? That, that's what I'm, yeah, like, right. That's what I'm trying to. Uh, after a successful return, let's see, return. Um, huh, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't see something that says that the return value. That's, yeah, that's just me being, like, picky as, like, that's, like, my grammar obsessiveness, because it's just, yeah. just uh, On success, these calls return the new file descriptor. Which I assume is treated as the duplicate. I just, yeah. It, yeah, the new, the new one. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would guess. It just doesn't explicitly say. Um, doesn't matter. I'm being nitpicky. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I'm the, following it. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think the, yeah. It sounds like the old and the new file descriptor. The duplicate is the one that has, the duplicate, uh, has this set to off. Off. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the new one. Yeah. Okay. Um, for the 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 blah flag for the duplicate descriptor is off. I think the duplicate is the new one. Yes, it's the new one. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, and then dupe two does the same thing, but you can say where the destination is. But instead uh -huh. of using the lowest numbered unused file descriptor, it uses the file descriptor numbered number specified by new fd. In other words, the file descriptor new FD is adjusted so that it now refers to the same open file at description as old FD. So when we call uh, uh -huh. here, oh, dupe I, two. I moved, uh, dupe two. FDN. So not that one. This is the one that's dealing with the uh, less than, greater than um, input and output redirect. We don't care about that. We care we don't here. Care about that. Okay about the pipe the oh, okay. right end of the pipe is now ls's standard out so this is like right. uh right. copy like when you do yeah CP okay a b we're copying this into yeah. this uh th we're copying the description from here to here mm -hmm. it would be interesting to see where like what what is on the other end of this integer like what struct mm -hmm. does this refer to uh i wonder i mean i know there must be a way to get that i wonder how hard it would be to figure that mm -hmm. out uh i wonder whether it's worth 
trying to find the information uh, yeah. held inside of a file descriptor. Um, I don't have another student right now. It's you again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, I uh, thought this was going to take forever, man. <laughs> I also am very surprised. I'm also really glad to go through and really figure out this whole file descriptor thing. Because I remember it being like... Uh, <laughs> it feels like very like hand wavy right like yeah, like, yeah i don't know something happens the code works great um <laughs> well and it's like just follow this structure and it's like but i don't like what yeah so let's see um dupe two but instead of using the lowest, uh, it, in other words, the file descriptor is adjusted so that it now refers to the same open file description as old FD. If the file descriptor new FD was previously open, it is mm -hmm. closed before being reused. The close is performed silently, i.e. any errors during the close are not returned by dupe two uh okay so standard out might already have been open in this child process by the time we get here mm -hmm. and if it was already open it just closes it it just closes it and if closing it causes an error we don't get that error. nobody knows yeah nobody okay knows but I feel like that's fine because we haven't even done this yet. So we haven't written right. to standard out at all. Mm -hmm. Well, we have here, but uh, ignore that. Um, <laughs> well, it returns right here. So, yeah, it, it won't get here. Um, right, right. Yeah. Um, okay, so the the pipe... The right side of the pipe is now the current process's standard out. The information mm -hmm. about the right side of the pipe is now in the current process's standard out. And then we don't... So this close doesn't actually mean close some... It's not closing this. It's closing this. Close means i'm not exactly sure how to put uh, like what this means it it uh -huh. changes the file structure number three like the you know how this is a three and this is a one and those yeah are both different structs somewhere in memory right this must it must be that this closes uh close means modify the struct and we have oh. this other struct like what it means for a file descriptor to be open is that there's some field that's either a zero or a one maybe right um, okay and this sets that field on this one to be uh closed whatever closed means whatever closed is yeah yeah and then the information about the pipe is still in the the struct standard to by one yeah, yeah. okay um so the right end of the pipe. Okay, so that all works and makes sense to me. So that's the parent side. Uh, skipping over mm -hmm. the whole input file name thing. Right. Um, and I guess the input file name is not really all that e much extra. So we have dupe2 fd in fd in exists if the input file name was able to be opened and we just copy the information about that file to the standard in mm -hmm. and then we close again this means modify some struct not mm -hmm. it's not like closing i guess it's kind of like two different programs can have a file open and one of them can close the file but that doesn't close it for the other program i guess it's like that i like that description okay, okay. 
I cool. like that one. Um so yeah, I think that's I think that's a a good way to think about it. It kind of uh, until I said that I was thinking about like a file is either open or closed. So if you close the file, how is that not a problem for everybody else who's reading the file? Um, right, right. But yeah, I guess it's more like I guess it's more like just two different programs having an open file. Uh Okay, cool. So then, um, so then maybe moving on to here. Okay. Uh, so the so this is now cat. Cat, right? Uh, yeah. Cat is, we do another fork, and then we. In the cat process or what will become the cat process we can close the right end of that pipe because we don't want to write back from cat back to ls we just want to read stuff from ls in cat uh and also even if we did write stuff uh ls isn't reading from this pipe anyway right so that makes sense now. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. This we'll skip. And then here we are saying that our standard in is the read end of mm -hmm. the pipe. Okay. And then we this struct can now be closed. Mm hmm. I guess this uh, this is the same program having a file open twice, <laughs> and it can close that one of them and still have the other one open. I guess okay. that's a more accurate. That's what's actually happening. Okay. Yeah, I guess now that I think about it, I get I I don't really know what it means for a file to be open versus right, closed. Right. Right. What does that even right. mean? What does that mean? I guess it means <laughs> that this struct has certain information in it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I forget if we were done reading through dupe two. Steps of closing and reusing. Oh yeah, we got to the point where it said that it would close silently. Silently, yeah, yeah. The steps of closing and reusing the file descriptor new FD are performed atomically okay. i don't know what that means like atomically. wait yeah what does it mean in this context like um either it all happens oh okay or none of it happens oh okay okay um this is important because trying to implement equivalent functionality using close and dupe would be subject to race conditions whereby new FD might be reused between the two steps. Uh, so the steps of closing and reopening the file descriptor. Oh, okay. So I think it's talking about if the destination file descriptor was already open, uh, then... So if the file destination file descriptor was already opened and you needed to close it to put in new a new files information um, that's two different steps erasing the old information and writing the new information so they're saying that if you erase the old information and then create new information or copy new mm -hmm. information then you'd have race conditions what would be uh 
not sure what the what that is talking like what would the issue be or by like in the example the that they give might be reused yeah. between the two steps uh but if you called close and then dupe isn't dupe supposed to give you a new fd Oh, but we're copying stuff from one FD to another, which is not what Duke does. Okay. What? And, and like new FD and old FD like refer to the same thing, right? Uh... I don't think so they have the same information File? they have the same information okay they have copies of the same information but they're not the same as each other okay uh such reuse could happen because the main program is interrupted by a signal handler that allocates a file descriptor or because a parallel thread allocates a file descriptor So, oh, because we're copying into a specific file descriptor that if we closed it, oh, yeah, okay, because we're copying into a specific file descriptor, we might try closing that file descriptor and then calling dupe and hoping that it gives us back that file descriptor that we just closed because mm -hmm. the one that we just closed in theory should be the one that we get back from dupe because dupe gives back the lowest number mm -hmm. but the thing that called close might get and then calls dupe might get interrupted between calling close and dupe and the thing that interrupts it might also call dupe. So, uh, we might, uh, we might do like here, it, mm -hmm. we might try close zero mm -hmm. and then dupe immediately um p zero and uh expect this to go to like the return value of this mm -hmm. um whoops um uh we might expect that f d must be zero because dupe has to return the lowest next available integer and if we just close zero that should make zero available and that's the lowest integer so if we call dupe but it might be that so actually so does that make sense so far what i just said yeah oh, okay um so we might call close and then execution gets suspended right here Right. And then some other thread in the same mm -hmm. process calls it dupe right here. And that mm -hmm. other thread would get the file descriptor zero. And then when we resume and then we call dupe, we'll get file descriptor three or whatever. Mm. Okay. So if... So we can't do this unless we like did some sort of lock and then uh unlock. Right. And we could do that. Um and then it then it would work, but dupe two does that internally, I guess. Okay. Okay. It calls lock 
closes this if it's currently open, then, and what what closing means must be just deallocating and then putting this number in a, a list of numbers that are available. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so that list must be also guarded by mutexes and right. safe and stuff. And then, then it creates a new struct into which it copies all the information from this one and then it puts that new it says okay this number is now not available anymore so it pulls it back off of that list uh the that keeps track of the open or the lowest available file descriptors or the maybe instead it's a list of in use file descriptors that would actually be easier to do you can't keep track of all the unused file numbers <laughs> the all infinity of them uh unless there's there is actually such a thing as a maximum open file descriptors i wonder i wonder if this uh has something to do with that like you for some reason i, I don't know exactly what the deal is but there's a there's mm -hmm. a maximum number of file descriptors that a process can have this comes up every once in a while uh, okay. with like xargs and uh, find and exec uh, if you there's a function that you can do where you say that you want to like find every file that with like the, the file name has or the insides of the file have some string inside of it um, mm -hmm. And when doing that, uh, you can uh, run into uh, the max open file descriptors has been reached, so it just dies. Um, I'll have I'll have to. I think I think maybe that would be mm, we could we could look into that later. Um, uh, what about max open file descriptors? What's that even about? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, so going back here, I think I understand the race conditions. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like you understand the race conditions? Maybe. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm rereading it. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Yeah, I feel better about that. Especially your example was helpful with the order of um, closing and then duping. And then... Um, Expecting the file number to be the one that you just closed. Yeah, exactly. So so all of that is is done within the dupe call, right? Like, that's yeah. just... Yeah, uh, dupe two. Yeah, okay. Yeah, dupe two. Okay. Yeah. Um, such reuse could happen because the main program is interrupted by a signal handler, uh, or there's a parallel thread. Note the following points. If old FD is not a valid file descriptor, then the call fails, and new FD is not closed. Oh, that's good. Uh, that seems yeah. like the right thing to do. <laughs> uh, if old FD is a valid file descriptor, and new FD has the same value as old FD... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you tried to copy it into itself, I guess. Right, right, accidentally, right. Accidentally, I I guess I could see that happening if like you have an array like this, and then uh -huh. a number like maybe you didn't realize it that this ended up with this number yeah. at that spot, uh, because maybe the code is less straightforward than what we have. Absolutely, right. I could see myself doing that. Um, yeah. Okay, and that's dupe two. Dupe three is the same as dupe two, except that <laughs> um, the caller can force the close on can force the close on exec flag to be set for the new file descriptor by uh, specifying that. See the description in there for the reasons why this may be useful. Okay, 
uh, if old FD equals new FD, then F then dupe three fails with an error e invalid, as opposed to just returning, returning new FD. New FD. Yeah. 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 I feel okay. like I feel like that is a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Also, this naming scheme magnificent. Um, <laughs> Dupe is the one that takes in one argument. Dupe two takes in two arguments. Okay, that's good. Right. Dupe three, two arguments. Three. Oh no, I guess it does take in three arguments. The three the because flags. the flag, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, perfect. That's a great naming scheme. It actually, it actually is a pretty good naming scheme. Um, <laughs> three. Okay, so then. That's what dupe two does. Okay. We've kind of been ignoring close. Close. And open. I agree. Yeah. Um. Do you want to go read those? Yeah. Why not? Okay. See man to close. And we said that we were gonna read open as well. Yeah. Close. Yeah. How current piping works. I feel like we've done that. Yeah. Um, we haven't done an arbitrary number of pipes, although I feel like that that I don't want to is... open that box yet. <laughs> it's more. <laughs> it feels more approachable now. Like I, I understand. I feel like I could make some headway on it instead of being like, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. completely wrong. Um, yeah. So something about like a a linked list maybe. Uh, and we add pipes to it. Oh, that's cool. Super cool. I like, um, yeah. Okay. And then, okay, so man to close. Let's go read through that. Um, close file descriptor. Close a file descriptor. That's from Unistida. Close mm -hmm. a file descriptor. Closes a file descriptor so that it no longer refers to any file and may be reused so the number may be reused mm -hmm. any record locks held on the file it was associated with and owned by the process are removed regardless of the file descriptor that was used to obtain the lock yeah i was just thinking so what if you mm -hmm. have more than one file descriptor for the same file and you close one of them? I guess that means that you lose any locks that you had on any of them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly what a file lock is, but that seems like kind of a bummer. Like if, <laughs> I, if I had a lock, I would expect to have that lock until I release that lock. Unless you, yeah. yeah but yeah. this kind of seems like some other thread could release that lock behind my back. Right, if you um, tell it to close. Okay, I see. Which... So, like, the, the close yeah. call, like, supersedes that lock? It, it sounds like if you call yeah. close okay. on some file descriptor, then... Any locks yeah. on that file are just lost for all Gone. file descriptors pointing at that same file. This F control okay. whoops has come up a few times. Um, yeah. So maybe it would be good to go into F control. Um, so if the FD is the last file descriptor referring to the underlying open file description. So we want to, I want to see what this, what is a file description? What's yeah. that? Um, That's what I've been, yeah. I wonder. We can jump into that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what we would read. Go back and find out what a file, file description is for example from man to uh close yeah close 
rooms and probably open and um if it's the last one mm -hmm. referring to the open file description the resource the resources associated with the open file are freed okay and free is the counterpart to malloc so this must mean that the the dyna dynamically right. allocated struct the, this must mean that there is some dynamically allocated struct and, and that, that memory is, free. is is getting yeah. freed yeah okay um so the resources associated with the file open file description are freed if the descriptor was the last reference to a file which has been removed using unlink the file is deleted oh man uh <laughs> Uh, unlink. Oh, for what exactly is a file description? Okay, so we've had this. Yeah, I know. I, that's why uh, I'm like, yeah. What? Let's learn about the file descriptions. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, hold on. I still don't know. Oh, right. Okay, so I think something told us at some point that it's in open. Now, now that I'm reading this open? note again, yeah. so I think open actually says what the file description is. So hopefully, hopefully these two are the same one. Um, so this unlink thing, uh, unlink. We did this now. Uh, so I'll put that up there. Mm -hmm. Um. Zero on success, negative one, and then error no is set. Uh, EIO. An error occurred. I think I I think I remember that there's an E I E I O. Uh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> um. What what like is a, that? What is an what is it? Yeah. What is an E I E I O? An error on input or output. Well, I know, like an oh. EIO, but it, what, what's another EI in front of it? Like, it, uh, another input error on the input output error? Like what? Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. Wait, oh. uh, oh, I see, I see what you're saying now. Uh, yeah, yeah what would yeah. be other? Okay, yeah. Um, EIB, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Just real quick, <laughs> man to, or man, oh, what is the, I think one of the categories, one of the sections is mm -hmm. all of the different numbers, but uh, let's try Unix, E-I-E-I-O. Um, That took too long. Oh. Yeah. Evidence-based yeah. international early intervention office. <laughs> well, there you go. There's one E I E I O. Okay, so not that one. Okay, so let's go to the okay. open command. Yeah. Um. Open create. Uh, open and possibly create a file or device. It's in one of these places and it's open on a path name and flags uh, or path name flags and mode and create is on a path name and a mode mm -hmm. given a path name for a file open returns a file descriptor a small non-negative integer for use in subsequent system calls Mm -hmm. Okay, so all of these system calls will know that that integer refers to something. The file descriptor returned by a successful call will be the lowest numbered file yeah. descriptor not currently open for the process. Uh, by default, the file descriptor is set to remain open across an exec VE. 
i.e. the fd clo exec file descriptor flag is described f control is initially disabled the new file descriptor is set to remain open across exec ve and we are doing an, an exec i think this means the whole family of things mm -hmm. and not just exec like, ve just the whole family of like exec and calls P... or exec v calls uh like... i think my guess is exec and then anything anything okay uh is initially disabled i wonder if that's why we need to close the other one does that have something to do with like why don't we just leave even though we're not writing on the on cat we close mm -hmm. the read side of the pipe but like who cares why does that matter yeah maybe uh, i remember it mattering and things didn't work unless things didn't work unless you closed it yeah it was closed. yeah so maybe the maybe this has something to do with that um right can be used to change uh so clo exec flag can be used to change as default the file offset is set to beginning of the file else seek the file offset is set to the beginning of the file on open okay call to open creates a new open file description an entry point an entry in the system-wide table of open files oh okay so mm -hmm. okay so there's a system-wide entry of all the different files that are open so it must be that each process has a unique, has a file number, mm -hmm. a file descriptor, and the combination of process ID and file descriptor ID mm -hmm. uniquely identifies an open file. Okay. So that way, if multiple files open the same file, the operating system, or sorry, if multiple programs open the same file, this is how the operating system coordinates between them. It okay. just has one struct with all the open files there are. Okay. Um, and this entry records. So the file description is one of many in a system-wide table. Yeah. And it records file offset, file status flags, which are modifiable via FCNTL, that other one that we keep seeing. Yeah, okay. Um, a file descriptor is a reference to one of these entries. Oh, is that it? That's... So the, the description is the file offset and the status flags. Oh. Okay, I guess that's it. So the file offset, uh, where, where the cursor is in the file, and mm -hmm. the status flags, whether it's opened read, read-write, or... Uh, other flags like right only know. or yeah yeah whatever okay. all those things are whether or not it stays open when no the file descriptor refers to a file description oh god okay and the file descriptor the new file descriptor is set to remain open are these so the file descriptor is just a single number, and it refers to one of these file descriptions. So yeah, it must be that the file description also, one of the flags that it contains is whether it stays open across exec VE. Okay. Um, this entry records the file offset and the file status flag, so it must be that whether or not it stays open is one of these status flags. Um, File descriptor is a reference to one of these entries. This reference is unaffected if the path name is subsequently removed or modified to refer to a different file. So if you open a file 
and something else deletes that file, which is something that I have done before. I like uh, open mm -hmm. up a file t to do editing on it, and then I delete the directory that contains it. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um, if a file is a reference to one of these entries, this reference is unaffected if they, the, so a file descriptor is a reference to one of the, if not affected, is subsequently moved, modified to a different file. The new open file description is initially not shared with any other process, but sharing may arise via fork. That's exactly what mm -hmm. we had going on. Right, um, right. The argument flags must be one of the following, read only, write only, read write. Uh, the argument flags must be one of those. These request the file read, write, rewrite, respectively. In addition, zero or more file creation flags and file status flag can be bitwise ORed in flags. The file creation flags are this one, mm -hmm. whether it gets closed for exec calls o create o directory all of these different options which uh, are described right here <laughs> is this them this is mm. this one is there but i don't a see bolt. async or no append um, the distinction between these two groups of flags is that the file status flag flags can be retrieved. In some cases, modified with F control. The full. Oh, okay, so these three flags can't be modified. I guess the full list of file okay. creations flag is as follows. Okay, so this is this is just a partial list, and then here's the full list. Mm -hmm. I guess. Um, file creation flags and file status flags is as follows. Uh, close exec. Enable the close on exec flag for the new file descriptor. Specifying this flag permits a program to avoid additional operations to set the blah flag. Additionally, use this use of this flag is essential in some multi-threaded programs, since using a separate F control operation to set the flag does not suffice to avoid race conditions. Where one thread opens a file descriptor at the same time as another thread does a fork plus mm -hmm. exec ve okay is that the situation we are in uh, i don't know <laughs> so but why does it matter if more than one Thing has it open. Mode specifies permission. Following symbolic constants provided by mode. Okay. Oh, direct. Okay, so here's a bunch of other flags. Okay, so that's a file description is where the cursor is in the file and which of these flags are set. That's what mm -hmm. a file description is. Okay, that actually didn't take too long. <laughs> and that is this one as well. Mm -hmm. um, I... Uh, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go use the restroom. Mm -hmm.
Right, I'm back. Okay. Okay. I was like, oh no. Um, <laughs> now I'm um, gone. No. <laughs> let's see. So, max file descriptors. What's that even about? Mm -hmm. I think that might just be that that uh, struct in the that the system has has a maximum size. Yeah. Um. Which I don't know. That seems like uh, shouldn't that be dynamically allocated? I would think. Um, although I guess still there's a maximum size of, of like how how big the computer's memory is. Um, mm -hmm. There's always a maximum. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like that's probably. We don't need to look into that anymore. Or we, yeah, we kind that's, of do. That's okay. We did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then unlink and F control. These so F control sets flags. Um is what it sounds like. Uh F control. File descriptor command performs one of the operations described below to the open file descriptor this operation is determined by command may take an additional an optional third argument whether or not this argument is required is determined by the command the required argument type is indicated in parentheses after each command name in most cases the required type is int and we identify the argument using the name arg or void is specified if the argument is not required. Wow, I had no idea you could do that in C. You, so there's an optional argument whose type mm -hmm. varies. So how do you even do that in, in C? What? Uh, <laughs> find okay. So, do find the lowest numbered available. Duplicating a file descriptor. So, f dupe fd find the lowest numbered available greater than arg, and make it be a copy of fd. Okay. Oh, so this is different from dupe f2, which uses exactly the file descriptor specified. Find the you lowest just, number okay, available you... file descriptor greater than or equal to the arg. Okay. Okay. We'll see dupe for further details. What, <laughs> when would you want this? Uh, Find the lowest just... greater than or equal to arg and make it. A copy of FD. So. It might be that the file descriptor that you pass in mm -hmm. the lowest numbered available file descriptor. So the lowest, it might be that the thing that you pass in isn't available, whatever that means. What is What does available mean? Like it's not it, already like it's in use or in like it's... In, it's not pulling one that's already in use, like from from that table, or. But then what? So what is? Find the lowest number available file descriptor greater than or equal to R. Um. Okay. Well. Uh, 
Oh, so here's how you can lock records. I remember thinking mm -hmm. there must be some sort of locking going on. So, <laughs> flock. <laughs> File lock. <laughs> well, yeah. File lock. That's good. I like that. Um. Cool. All right. So. Get lock. Struct flock. Okay. I don't. Not sure if I want to get into. No, this might that. all be very specific. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit like this is too not concrete enough. I, I don't have like an experience where I'm like, oh, this is what this you is can, related yeah. to that. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, I mean, th there were some experiences you had though that made a, a lot of those descriptions. Uh, they at least gave context, so yeah. they're easier to follow. Yeah. Um. Well, okay. So then, unlink. I guess we could go read unlink. Um, and then <laughs> I guess I had that twice. So. Oh, that one we don't need anymore because we have what a file description is. Uh, let's see, man to unlink. Delete a name and possibly the file it refers to. Okay. Unlink cat. Um. <laughs> unlink at unlink dis deletes a file name from the file system if that name was the last link to a file and no processes have the file open the file is deleted and the space it was using is made available for reuse if the name was if the name was the last link to the file but any processes still have the file open, the file will remain in existence until the last process the last file descriptor referring to it is closed. If the name referred to a symbolic link, the link is removed. If the name referred to a socket, FIFO, or device, the name for it is removed, but the processes which have the object open may continue to use it. Okay, cool. Unlink at operates in exactly the same way as unlink, as either unlink or rmdir, depending on whether or not the flags include the at removedir. If the mm -hmm. path name operates in exactly the same way as either of those, if the name, if the path name given in, if the path name given in path name is relative, then it is interpreted relative to the directory referred to by the file descriptor dir fd rather than relative to the current working directory okay of the calling process and is done via unlink and rmdir uh, if the path name is relative and dir fd is special value that then path name is interpreted relative to the current working directory um okay so it's just unlink at is unlink except you can specify except for it takes into account like what directory it should be in mm -hmm. um and then error is set too many symbolic mm -hmm links were encountered in translating that's uh fun <laughs> name too long <laughs> um okay so i feel like i get that uh cool arbitrary number of pipes do you want to try to do th three pipes yeah, we could try to do three pipes. That sounds good. 
Um, so as pipe, so I guess this one needs to be has one pipe, uh, and then we could make a has two pipes. So this says that there is there's any pipe at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So then, if there's any pipe at all, it says handle pipe. Whoops. Um. And we, yeah, if we, I think we should do, or maybe we could do inside of here has one pipe, hard V, and then do this, and else, uh, there should be if <laughs> has one pipe. Uh, and then else if has two pipes rv then we'll do handle two pipes handle two pipe command and right now these are wishful thinkings. Um, yeah, so yeah. Hold on. I'm. Yeah. I, I made a I made a new file just in case. Like uh, so that's what I was doing. Just oh, okay. So I don't go mad. <laughs> right. Oh, actually, yeah. Do you want to like make a commit? Are you using Git? No, I'm not using Git. No, I know I need to. Oh, I know. Okay. I know. That's the next project. Uh, right. No, All I right. just saved a new file. Um, All right. So I'm Git, like, what thing at a time? But yeah, you're right. right. Yeah. So Git is another thing that like we could stop doing. Like we could we could do that too with the remaining time. Uh, if you, if uh, we're spending like too much, like. If, no, this if, is if fine. This is no, 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 this is fine. Right. Yeah, I have, I have like I've started to to do the Git deal, but then I just, you know, get stuck on other things. But no, this is a good right. reminder. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay, it um, has one. So I added if has one pipe, and then which stays the same. Uh, else if, yeah. So I now I add in have like an else, uh, and then f print f standard error. Too many. Exit <laughs> negative one. No, maybe we don't need to do that. Uh, what is? How do we just say? Okay, so we could probably just return. Um. You. Uh -uh. Giving up. Without doing. I don't know. Something along those lines. Oh, it's so defeatist and sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Okay. Oh no. Uh... Okay, there we go. Um. Okay, so then, uh, we have to go and make the has update has one. Let me, let me make sure I updated has pipe. Make has will pipe. just tell us <laughs> what what exists out of all that stuff and what doesn't. <laughs> he, that's has a good one point. pipe does not exist. All right, let's go make has yeah. one pipe. Uh, so has pipe will get the index of a pipe and it might return a negative one um and it does it on argv so cool has one pipe takes in a char star star argv and uh if let's see int first pipe index oh, okay is equal to get index of argv pipe uh if first pipe index is negative one turn false um and then otherwise we want to i think we can do uh this isn't just the first pipe index this will be the pipe index so then we can do pipe index uh, is equal to get index on what would you do here do you have a guess as to so hold on so we first get our pipe index which returns that if it's negative one there is no pipe whatsoever uh yeah so now I want to, I want to, I'm trying to get, oh, so now I just get pipe indexes, get pipe index on RV with the pipe, right? That'll return the actual value. Uh... Um. But I want, I want just, yeah. yeah. I just don't, so now, so now I'm determining that if it has at least, I want it to only have one pipe, right, with this function? Yeah, we want to determine, so argv, uh, so the first argument to get index is where to start looking. Yeah. Um, so, and right now we're saying, or on this one we're saying, look here. Yeah. And so if I look after pipe, where we already searched, so yeah. if I, so we start there. So on pipe index. Uh, not quite. We can't. Uh, so argv at pipe index. Yeah, 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 yeah. Argv at at pipe index won't work because isn't this this is where we found this is where we found the initial pipe if we've gotten this far, uh, right? Oh, but you want to look at the one next to it, right? Like after it, yeah. and then start there and then keep looking. Yeah, yeah, plus one. Okay, I follow, I follow now. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then uh, I think this still won't quite work because mm -hmm. the argv is a char star star. Argv at some index is a char star. Okay. So get index probably takes a char star star. So we want the address of a char star. Mm 
this would be a char star, not a char okay, star that's star. A... Okay. This is the address of a string, not the address of an array containing addresses of strings. So what I have right now is the array of a string. Uh, yes, the the array of characters that make up a string. Right, right. That's what this value would be. This would be the address of whatever comes right after the first pipe. Whatever comes after the first pipe. The the word and I want it... that comes after the first pipe. So if we had like ls pipe mm -hmm. cat, this would be the address of cat being stored somewhere. Mm -hmm. The address of the C in the cat. Right. We want not the address of the C in cat, but this whole thing has been broken up into an array mm -hmm. that contains the address of LS, the address of the pipe, and the address of cat. Mm -hmm. So this array doesn't actually store LS. It, ref it stores a, pointer a to. reference to it. Yeah, okay. So we want the address of this spot here. That would be... And? and the ampers? Is the ampersand yeah. in front of argv? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know the order of precedence. I'm pretty sure and is really low precedence, so it will be the address of this whole thing. And not the address of argv. Oh, okay. So do you want it in parentheses? Um, I'm saying that I think we don't need to, but I'm not oh, okay. sure. You're not sure? Okay. okay. Yeah. So. Oh, I, you're saying it has low press. Okay, I follow. I follow. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, now what? Okay, so now, uh, so if, if that returns... Uh, if pipe and so now you have to do the same thing, right? Because if mm -hmm. there is no other well, pipe index, so now it's going to search after it. Um, so that would return true. Like if if after this search, hold on. We searched once. If, yeah. Yeah. If you search again, uh. If this pipe index is negative one, uh, it should return true because then it has at least one. Yeah. But then it has more than one, right? Yeah. Uh, so this is saying is this, this yeah. is saying that it has zero. This would be it has zero. And then if we get past there, it has more than zero. It has more than get, zero. So that assumes at least one, right? At least yeah. one. And then this says not more than one. Which is our case. Yeah. Which is yeah, what yeah, we yeah. want. And then I think your curly braces, you have a curly brace at the end of this line. I have a curly brace. Oh, yeah, I do. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then if this didn't happen, then there's more than one. Right. So then return false. Yeah. We get past it, right? Yeah. I guess, uh, really, this should be, like, has exactly one pipe. Because mm -hmm. technically, if it has two pipes, it does have one pipe. Yeah. Um, has one pipe. I'm going to change that to has exactly one pipe. 
Okay, I think we're good on that. Um, let's try, instead of actually implementing has two pipes, let's just, uh, well, I guess it should be uh, fairly similar, but um, has exactly... Because you would just continue again two. after the one and make sure it doesn't have three, right? Yeah. So then we should return false here because that would be one pipe and then true and then false. Yeah. So has two would be has exactly two. Um, and then handle two pipe command. Let's go write a skeleton version of that so the code compiles. Handle, uh, yeah. Handle pipe command. Let's go there. And handle two pipe command. Which doesn't need to do anything. The turn. Okay. Um, let's go see if that compiles. It does. Woohoo. And then now that we've done that, um, uh, where even was, has exactly, okay. So now that we've done that, I'm imagining has n has exactly n pipes, uh, or even just a function that counts how many pipes it has. And then that's just yeah. an argument to something. I don't know, maybe doing handling an arbitrary number of pipes won't be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but okay, so it has exactly two pipes. And then does it compile and run for you? Or like what's... I ha I'm, I'm still finishing mine. Cool. Oh, somebody signed up right after you. That's good. is good. I had somebody sign up one time and they put down their name as AAA. <laughs> and I thought it was fake. Uh, but it wasn't. That was an actual person we met. Um, I think they... Was that their name? No, like that wasn't AAA? their name. They just did like key entry, like I don't care. Like... Yeah. Um, possibly, like, they'll show up at the top of every alphabetized list, so yeah. maybe that's oh. what they were going for. It's a good idea. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> I've legally changed my name to AAA, or what comes first in the ASCII table? Probably like space or something. Oh, but that doesn't, that's non printable. So, what's the first printable ASCII character? I don't know. Oh, um, we could in handle 
oh, okay. to pipe command, we could print something. Print handling to pipes for real Z's. Oh, so I haven't even I haven't done a handle one pipe command. Hold oh, on. I left handle pipe command as handle one pipe. I think handle pipe command. OK, hold on. Let me. Yeah, I guess it could be handle one pipe command, handle two pipe command. Let me go back. Handle pipe. Let's go back. Handle pipe. One of two has exactly one pipe. Yeah, so I have handle pipe command. Alice if has two pipes, uh, and we made this has exactly two pipes. We exactly did. Exactly. And handle. Exact. Exact. Exactly. Uh, okay. Cool. And then handle two pipe command, which will take in this, but it doesn't exist yet. And then you did a. I just uh, copied the opening of handle pipe command. Okay. And then made handle two pipe command that prints out something so we can tell that it was reached and then returns. You copied this. Did you do the just just this structure? I, I assume, just, right? Just because, the yeah. opening signature line. I didn't do any anything. So the the line oh with yeah the yeah of the function and the arguments. Okay. To, to okay. Start with. That's what I yeah it's two pipe, and then you just had this printf. Okay. Okay. And we'll see if it compiles. I don't know because can't do that. Um, I can. I made this shell too. Wait, what happened? I just I made my I made a new shell. Oh. I uh, see. this is still the same one. This is just this just changes, and that should work. Too many pipes giving up without doing anything. Feel sad. Oh, whoops. Oh, yeah. I knew. That's okay. Too many. Oh. It has exactly two pipes. Did I do that wrong? Um. Just compare. Here's in between pointer and three five. What did I do? Oh, I did it again. Okay, 60. Yeah.
Can I fix those? <laughs> Didn't I? I no, maybe clear. Maybe port save. No, I'm still doing something wrong. Okay, 60. I thought I did. Let's go back to 60. That might be old output. I thought I cleared it though, because I click clear. Yeah. Does it just scroll yeah. me? Oh, it just scroll. What? Yeah. Oh, that's so awful. I thought it like got rid of everything. So that's the difference between the terminal and the shell. Oh. Oh. Okay. Good to know. Um. Yeah. So okay, I was back on on uh, handle two pipe command. I'm like, I feel like I'm going crazy. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need um, types for all of the arguments. Where did I pull them from? Where? It looks like you copied the invocation of handle pipe command. Rather than, yeah, rather than here, mm -hmm. which is what I wanted. Oh, now it's really mad. Oh, because I just did handle pipe command instead of handle two pipe command. Okay, so now you're still mad, but less mad. In function eval, what did I do to eval now? Oh, something stupid. <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't think I taught it, but touched it, but maybe I did. 415. 15. This is what happens when I like rush myself. I'm like, what are you doing? Okay. This is fine. 415. Yeah, Void maybe eagle. there's a missing Wait. curly brace or. I have a curly brace here. Expression before close curly brace expression. Before or close four, curly 72. brace. 72. Um, no, no, no. That's. Uh, that is. Oh, go to the here. very first one. So, uh, if you in the in the terminal down below, that four seventy two is from the previous in invocation. Um, but I and it it's on it's in the end of the current one too. But I always go to the very first one. So line four sixty five is the first one. Four report okay. reported. Reported. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. So line four sixty five, and uh, a lot of times when you fix the first one, all of the other ones you go don't... away. Okay. Yeah, there's a missing semicolon there on the previous line. On the return. Yeah, I should have seen that. Okay. And then... So, okay, 466. Now... Um, so this should oh, be... Uh, you have two else's there. If... So line Elf 460... If. Oh, okay. Oh, is this, is this, I think it's supposed to be another... So that is built in... No, this should be... So, like this. If this... Uh... If this... Look, uh, see here? The has exactly... Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I did... I kept the has pipe, and then I divided into... Either it has exactly one pipe, or two pipes, or... Uh, Oh, okay. You did has pipe as one thing, and then you yeah as one thing, and then if you get to there, if has pipe, okay. If has exactly one pipe, okay, that makes sense because now you're guaranteed this stuff to be somewhat true. Uh, uh, and then you this could probably be optimized uh i mean this can definitely be optimized i was just <laughs> doing 
leaving the most like, of the structure as as it was as exactly. Is. Yeah. 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 And then here, this is the else if. Okay, so this one goes away. Else if has exactly two pipes. We handle our two pipes. I think I have auto formatting cleanup on, but whatever. And then this is the else. Uh, this is an else, it, and then we have, have our problem. Two. It has too many. Yeah. And then we return. And then uh, between else. that else and the other else, there should be one more closed curly bracket. There should be two closed curly brackets between the return and the else. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, exactly. This one here, and then this closes this block, right? So this, uh, the else on line 467 should match up with the if on, like, way at the top of your screen. This one. Mm -hmm. So there should be one more closed curly bracket before that Right else. here, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Why are you being not mean to me? Whatever. Okay, hold on. Auto formatter, please. I have one. I just don't know the keyboard oh. shortcut. And, and when I click it, I'm like, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I, I wasn't like admonishing you. I was like, auto formatter, oh, please okay. help save the day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please save me. No. It's I 2000 just, sometimes... and something. This should be just automated by now. <laughs> Come on. When I, when I, when I get the command wrong, I yeah. can like do some dumb things, and I'm like, I don't want to oh, deal with see, that right now. It's a high risk thing. It's not even not high risk. I'm just being supremely lazy. You know what? It's like, hold on, let me look it up. Because I was, I was like, how do I? What is the auto format? Supreme. One. I don't feel like that's real. Yeah, that one sounds right. Uh, hold on. I definitely uh, have had with yeah, there we go. Okay. A few different students trying to get auto formatting working in Visual Studio. And I no, I can do that myself. That's fine. I okay. figured that out. Yeah. I, yeah. I, well, what I mean is, uh, a lot of students yeah. have had issues with it. So, it's like, don't don't feel bad. I guess. No, yeah, it's for me, it's just uh, I made sure I put in the time because I had problems with my Python auto formatter. And oh, so I, I had see. to go and customize that one. So when I did that one, I made sure C was working, too. I see. And I just cool. I want to change it further because I don't like all the way. I don't like the way some of the brackets are done because uh, then I get brackets lost. But anyway, this, this worked. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm a fan of the one true brace style where the mm -hmm. opening bracket is the is at the end of the line like that or the opening bracket is at the end of the oh, oh the first line yeah up here this guy i like that like too that. Yeah. uh yeah that's what i prefer because otherwise i like i yeah i don't like it so much i don't know cool. okay i fixed that does it and then we what does it do now oh it, it ran okay, and, cool. so then, and then i was gonna try to, to test how many pipes we can put in so, uh, mine fails too, too many, many pipes. pipes. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not sure what's up with that. That seems maybe maybe has exactly one pipe and has exactly two pipe are not uh written. I can mess around with the logic. Yeah, I'll mess around with the logic on that and then fix it. That's oh. not too hard to troubleshoot. Okay. Uh. Because cool. I think we're coming up on time, right? No, we have like another half hour. I booked to nine thirty or my, like nine thirty my time. What? What? Yeah. Well, whatever. Do you, you want to stop? Are you like? Yeah, we could. Let's we could let's stop. wrap. I want to get. I want to get some food. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds I good. I thought I booked to nine. That's my bad. I'm sorry, dude. That's all right. Um, we can we can stop. We've we uh we got a lot of cool reading done that like. Well. I, I feel yeah, like, and now yeah, I and now I I'm gonna go through and I I think I can add some other commands and okay. like you know 
experiment from what we went through. Uh, and then the pipe explanation walked through. The diagram helped a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, cool. It helped me. Um, I made a screenshot of it, and I will... Um, oh, actually, you know what? I should be able to open up the screenshot in here. Um, pictures, screenshots... Uh, oh, shoot. Is this sorted? No, no. It's sorted correctly. Yeah. Okay, cool. There it is. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that was helpful to talk through. I appreciated that, you know. <laughs> the yeah okay all right uh food time and yeah uh i'll see you next time yeah yeah see all you right. in the next year you know have a have oh, a yeah, good holiday and all that too. stuff yeah, yeah. Will do. yeah all right bye thanks danny all right you're welcome bye